basically, if anyone's got a cell phone, just put it on silent or vibrate. They don't interrupt the meeting. If you want to speak, please go outside. Everyone up here is trying to hear when people are talking. No pages no more. <laughs> people, people laugh at me all night. When they say that anyway. uh, welcome to the Zone Board of April 4th, 2023. My name is Matty Akins. I'm the chairman, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. Raynell, Mr. Himmel, Mr. Chin, Mr. O'Brien, the Director of Inspectional Services, uh, Mr. Conlon, our clerk, Ms. Newman, and we'll go right into it. New business, page number huh? 2269, Marcus Romero, <coughs> for variance to construct the second floor of air addition on the front of number 14 Nelson Street. You have to be a representative there. Are you going to watch people That's what? Yeah. If anyone's going to testify tonight or think you might testify, please raise your right hand. Stand up and raise your right hand if you could. If anyone's going to testify tonight, if you don't take an oath, you're not going to testify. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter of hearing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, why don't you tell us what you want to do in your body? Uh, so my wife and I are looking for the building. Name and address for the record. Uh, Marcus Moraldi, 14 Nelson Street. Yep. 169. Yep. Uh, we moved here in Again, you have four spaces out front? Four parking spaces, um, two for the rental unit, two for us. Okay. And then, um, and kind of, a, it, it, I mean, the, the shape of that. Uh, yeah, the lot is way. very narrow and long. Um, yeah. yeah, so we're seeing. It's going to be a cost factor here, of course. Well, they're, they're already there, you just don't spend them. You know? Yeah, exactly. Already not bomb, right? Yeah. All right. I have no questions, <clears throat> anyone? I have no questions. No questions. No questions. No thoughts this time. Is there any, you can have a seat. Does anyone want to speak in favor? Anyone want to speak in favor, first call? Second call. Third call closed. And a letter here from the uh, DPW, we reviewed the above reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Please step forward, state name and address for the record, please. show you right here if you want to come up and just show you what you're doing. Here's the, here's the platform. So Are you on that? This is how you can okay. So we were wondering if there was this is the, yeah well here we go. Uh, yeah. Next page? Keep going. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. But what he's doing is his itself. He's taking the front of that off that overrides that whole section. Mm -hmm. and it's going to override and make it open and look like college. That's where the pot is. Okay. Two 
Every year it goes up for four years. If you don't finish, you're being taxed on it. So you might as well do it, finish it. But is there anybody going to check to see what he's, if he needs to buy it? Inspectors go out there all the time and make sure everything's done. That's all I can tell you. Mr. Carlin, would you like to speak about that? Well, then, all it says, the building code says is the work has to be uh, ongoing and continuous. If he stops for any length of time, he'd have to come back here. He wouldn't be able to continue. The job has to be completed. What's that length of time? What's the length of time? Yeah, there's no length of time, sir. It's just as long as, long as the work is ongoing. As long as he's keep working at it, you say. Yeah, but if he, if, he, if he stops working on it, is there a time? All, all the building department. All the building department will go down there. They will go down there. Before he moved in, the, the street was, was respectable. Mm -hmm. Ask anybody who drive by there now. He's got jumped out the front. He's got uh, all kinds of plastic mm -hmm. laying around. He's yeah. got sheet, sheeting blowing out the house. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. Is this new piece going to be like that? Um, I would say not. It's brand new. I hope he would, he would have it built right. He's, he's got a brand new shed down the back. It was built about three years ago, and the plastic is all over my face. So you put nothing on the top of the box? No siding on it? No. no you put the uh, <coughs> car paper on it, but no shingles. Yeah. Like the side in the front? Yeah, the front. Like the front of the house? Yeah. He started a porch about three, four years ago and never finished it. Mm -hmm. The plastic is blown all over there. I picked up a piece of plastic off my yard today that he mm -hmm. blew off his house. You put it in the front door for him. I would have gave him a present. Thank you. Anyone else? Opposed on the side? Council? Uh, James Devine, 117 Cross Street. Uh, a few other neighbors have uh, addressed concerns. Uh, I don't believe it's for you guys on the list, I would mention it. Uh, the house has been uh, worked on randomly, sporadically, it's a disaster. Yeah. I think it's probably going to be more for uh, issue of permit or something. Contingencies on it, but I just said I would mention that uh, the house is dilapidated. 
a lot of trash around the place, mm -hmm. things like that. So just uh, I said I'd mention it. We'll probably be looking for during retirement to uh, make sure that there's some type of contingency that they we'll take care of. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Last call. Oh, I'll probably hear you close to the uh, yeah. yeah, the applicant, please come up. Is the applicant still here? Mr. Morales, please step forward. Yeah. A lot of accusations by a lot of people in the neighborhood saying you're not keeping your house clean. I drove up there a few years ago on another project, and it's the same way it was when I drove by at that. So here's what we're going to do, and I'd like the board to do, and we'll talk about it. You're going to clean your place up first, clean it all up, and come back here and see us. Everyone's in agreement. Let's, let's give him a month, get his place all cleaned up, and we'll take a ride by there. And if it's not cleaned up enough, then we'll wait another month. We'll just put it off. So the nuts are not. I mean, we had this before up in up in Wallace, and they got through the nut. The guy had boaters, cars. It probably took him three months to clean it up, but we didn't let him build anything for three months. So it's up to him. Clean it up. You know, it's, it's an eyesore, and it, it, it shouldn't be doing that. It shouldn't be doing that to your neighbors. It really shouldn't. Uh, so we'll make a decision. You can sit here and wait. Thanks. Guys, what do you think? Yeah, give them a month to the bad site. It is, it's bad. It's been like that because we've, been coming, we've had a couple of other projects that we've built up there. And it's been the same like that for years. I know he bought it like that probably, but no, he didn't do nothing to fix it up. My only question mark is um, does he understand what this board means by cleaned up? Yep. To what degree are you talking about cleaning it up? Are you talking about anything specific on the property? Well, I want his yard all cleaned up. I like the front, any paper that's hanging and blowing all over the place, well, tack back it. down. Yeah, it's coming down, but tack it back up and you should have before it's ripped down. Before he gets a permit. I mean, I, I think you all. Yeah. Well, do you understand what we're saying? Yep. We want the yard clean. I, like I'm, like your neighbors. I, I, I've done this. A lot of work to prepare for right. this project. Yeah. I had done some work on the front of the house yeah. to make it functional for us when we moved in. The yep. house was in very bad shape when we purchased it. Yep. And uh, the interior was. Very Please let me speak. Um, I, I appreciate that things have gotten a bit out of control. Mm -hmm. We have two very small children who are working very hard to try to build ourselves a life and be a part of that. We're nothing but kind to our neighbors. Yep. And I've spoken about this project with Michael personally. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I I hope that they can have faith that we are doing the best we can as a young couple trying to build our family and our life and that it, everything takes some time. And I stopped working on things because the uh, front of the house is non-conforming and trying to uh, fix it up the way that I was yep. became a problem with the building department, so we started to plan this larger project. That I have one more question. Take care of. Who's going to do the work? Uh, I'm a licensed contractor. Um, I was going to do the work myself. Um, and small or large license? You have a large license or small license? I, I have a hundred Uh, I guess he gets it then. He's been around it. It's a nice thing to get it done and get it cleaned up. But, uh, so, Sro, do you think you can do that in a month? Yes, I can clean up my yard. All right. All right. See? Huh? Can I say something? Uh, no. No. Huh? May 9th? How's that work? May 9th? Yeah. Yeah. Have a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, CBA 2269, Marcus Morale, for a variance to construct the second floor did rear addition on the premise number 14, Nelson Street, Quincy, and make a motion to move that to May 9th. Second. On the motion? Saying that all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Anyone that wants to come here May 9th, if you're, if you're a butt uh, and it's not going right, please let us know, but we're going to go up there and look at the property.
しておりますけれども。
No, and then they got the CSA house. Yeah. Is, that the, is that the most recent? No. Okay. When did you change these? Uh, two weeks ago. Did you think the call was a bombing so we have time to do we, we, we hired them to take care of this, so. Hi, who? The J. J. Uh, yeah, he's not here with you tonight. They, they, so they, they, they told me I didn't even need to be speaking. You told him to fire. <laughs> <laughs> I told him that three times already. Everything's taking so long. He still comes back. Great for the check. So this is just going to be an access to the stairs. This is just going to be access. This is 15 foot by 15 mm -hmm. foot. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I have my soul hanging on the garages. Mm -hmm. Now, are these stories nine to ten feet? Nine, nine feet? Because you get ten feet, ten feet three between the floors. So is it like well, that's a frame room joist. Right. Yeah, so nine foot. First floor left. Nine foot. Clear. Clear. Right? Yeah. Then you go up and go up ten feet, ten feet three. When I was reading, it just, I, I just didn't know what, I'm asking how high is it? 35 feet is the total. Uh, Let's try it one more time. Inches. How high are the ceilings in each floor? Nine feet. That's all yeah. Thank you. Not the edge. No, no. But I was looking at that and you can see right. Because you measured from here to the top. No, no, you should have. No, no. Fourth floor is like 10 feet. I don't know if we're missing three inches. Somewhere to three, three, six, nine. Oh, yeah. Another foot missing. So this is where the previous house was here. Yep. Lot, which we now, have the bars so, here. so this fence, the fence is in your property, right? Yes. Yeah, the shed. So you got to let you use it. This is Jeremy's home. I was with him today. I hope so. I guess we did pull the permit correct to take this property down mm -hmm. and had it closed out the building department. Right. You can go back up there and let us just take these set of plans. That would be nice. If anyone wants to look at what you're doing, just take them out. Pop deck doorway out. The same one that we have. We have the update. They just going to have an access. So we just open it up. You have the updated one. So it comes to the deck. Before it had the, the previous plan had a fold oh. up there. But it's, an eight it's, just, it's just a six. stair access. Yeah. Any questions the applicant? How did this study? Did everyone kind of hear what we were talking about up there? The mic? No? Yeah? Uh -huh. it's a uh, is there anyone that wants to speak in favor? First of all? Oh, I live on Post Island. Just name an address for the record. Wendell Clarity, 76 Post Island. Thank you, Wendell. I have no problem. He's right behind me. Okay. Are you in the White House or the I'm the yellow. Is that for Hmm? Which one's the first one when you go into the left? That yellow? Well, he's like. Across the street. Oh, you're across the street from I'm 76, both sides. Oh, okay. I know we. I know we. Up yeah. to the side. You know? huh. right. Yeah, I know it. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else want to speak in favor? Third call, council. Good evening, guys. Uh, Dave McCarthy, Board of Council 48 Whitney Road. Uh, definitely in favor of the, the post island construction. Uh, you know, a lot of houses uh, got repaired down there in a similar way that Chris is going to do this one. And that empty lot, it'll, it'll look nice next to that uh, that blue one that we approved not too long ago with the carriage house. Chris has also been on C Street for a number of years, so he knows the area and uh, does good work. So. Yeah, the carriage house is not nice. Yeah, yeah full support. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Letter here from the DPW March 13, 2023. We've reviewed the scale for the above reference project, and our comments are as follows. One, specify how much impervious area will be increased due to the development. Two, provide plans showing the existing site conditions, layout of utility, grading, drainage, and the construction details. Three, explain how the surface runoff will be discharged and treated. Four, will there be any fill or change of grade due to the development? Five, the submittal package should generally provide a plan denoting the proposed erosion and sediment control practices to be implemented during the construction phase of the project to protect resource area. 
six upon completion of the project, as built plan showing all utilities, building footprints, reference bounds, and benchmarks defining the total site, faculties, and right of ways need to be submitted along with a digital file. If further information is required, please advise. Is there anyone opposed to run the side? First call? Second call? Third call? Okay, what again? This is from, do we have an address?
next agenda is DBA 2315, KBC Architect for variance to convert the existing single family home to two family dwelling. Construction is on the side of the Congress Center 34, 33, not Central Labs. African Air Representative here? Yes. sticks out of the other house and the window pot sticks out of this side house. So you're going in a little on each side. Yeah. Yet when I read the thing here, it says that your numbers are going down. I don't know what happened. Is that a typo or a, Numbers uh, going down? Yeah. yeah, like like uh, the left. Side left goes from 14, 5 to 10. Is that, is that because of the set of stairs? You want to have the type of what you wrote there. Is that because of this set of stairs here coming down? Oh, this yeah. is the existing No, that's all right there. Left side. The other side Left side, down. Left side. No, go down more. Go down. No. Middle, middle, middle. middle right, yeah, there. right there. This is just the stairs. The steps at the door. Right, but, yeah. but is that where that, you got 14, 11. You keep in the same line, yet you're losing three, four feet. Is that yes. the stairs? Just for the stairs. Okay, that's all right. I didn't know if I missed something or something wasn't printed right. Or, uh, I have no question. The layout, you did a great job. I know, it's, I know it's a tight input over there, but you made the parking for the people. You did it right. I have uh, no questions. No questions. Just the, the unit above the garage will be the second unit. Yes. Correct. From top to bottom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. The, yeah. And the, and the existing garage. single family, the, this is the. This is the existing single family, no change. Okay, no work. Yeah. Okay. No further questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone want to speak in favor? You gotta be careful. The microphone's right there on the side. That's all right. That's all right. Um, is there anyone who like to speak in favor? First call. Second call. Third call. All part of the hearing calls. I got a letter here from the DCW. Letter dated March 13th, 2023. We have reviewed the submittal for the above reference project and our comments are as follows. One, specify how much impervious area will be increased through the development. Two, explain how the surface runoff will be discharged and treated. Three, provide dimensions and grades for the paving area and all driveway entrances. Four, will there be any fill or change of grade due to the development? Five, upon completion of the project, as built plan showing all utilities and building footprints need to be submitted along with the digital file. So that file is going to be closed. Is there anyone opposed by the side? First call. Second call. Third call closed. Wow, what? I like it. I think I think they do it. Um, 
I like the off-street parking. Uh, I like that it wasn't too much. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, ZBA 23-15, JCBT architect for a variance to convert the existing single-family home to a two-family home and construct a side addition on the premise on the 33 North Central Ave. Quincy, make a motion to grant the variance. Second. Another motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. That's for your pride, fine. I don't know if you want the full plans. Oh, he forgot it. Those are the same ones. Yeah. Did she have them? Do you have them? Can I see that set of plans? Wait, I'm just going to take back. We can keep it because I don't know if we have that. We need to avoid it. All right. You need a helper. Help I did. No, you need a help. Oh, yeah. You didn't do it. Yeah, I'm going to bring you in. GDA 2316, Jonathan Silverstein's expired. For administrative appeal of the issuance of a permit to allow the construction of an addition to extensive renovations to the existing dwelling on the premises number 15 Jewish Street, Quincy. The applicant or representative here. Council, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Jonathan Silverstein. I am here representing the uh, neighbors directly across the street to the property of 15 Jewish, um, uh, David Gabon and Teresa Wilson. Uh, I have submitted some materials in support of uh, this administrative appeal. I did submit another uh, letter, an opinion of an engineer earlier today by email, um, but Ms. Newton suggested I bring hard copies to the board, which I have sure. here. Thank you. I bought six copies. Oh. Is there an extra one there? I am. Could be public school, sir. All right. Um, the board may well remember this property from a hearing last year uh, where the property owner was seeking zoning relief uh, to construct essentially the exact same structure, just on another part of the lot. Um, now, in what I would call a little bit of a shell game, the structure's just been moved over next to the existing structure uh, with a claim that it's going to remain a two-family, just two very large units um, with two second-story living rooms in, in addition to the first-story living room. Um, and uh, in that this proposal should not require any zoning relief. Uh, and a building permit was issued for that. And uh, I would argue that the building permit was issued in error for several reasons. First of all, uh, the ordinance clearly requires a special permit for any addition that uh, is above 25% increase in ground coverage. So uh, the applicant tries to get around this by suggesting that ground coverage only includes the piers that the house is sitting on and not the house itself, which is a larger footprint than the existing house. Uh, the term ground coverage isn't defined in the ordinance, but uh, the closest uh, definition would be building coverage clearly the same concept, and that clearly includes the floor area of the lower floor. Uh, and by that definition, this would be 106% increase, mm -hmm. and clearly require a special permit under the Planning Plan Protection District ordinance. Um, in addition, uh, and I don't know how to characterize the estimated cost other than absurd, um, the stated replacement cost in, for the existing structure uh, set forth on the assessor's field card is half a million dollars. And yet they're saying they're going to build a larger structure, newer structure, on a very expensive 
raised foundation for about a quarter of that, or a third of that. Um, why would they underestimate that? Well, for one thing, the city got a much lower building permit fee, and I would think that everyone would be upset about that. But more importantly, what's the magic of staying under 50% of um, estimated uh, cost? It doesn't constitute a substantial improvement, either under the ordinance or under the state building code, which would trigger a requirement to raise the lowest level of the existing structure. Now, that may not be the case under the building code if there were no improvements taking place to the existing structure. But we know there are improvements taking place to the existing structure. They're going to be removing siding, vents, electrical service, windows. They're going to be um, re demolishing an internal staircase. They're going to be demolishing, supposedly, an internal kitchen. They're going to be doing all sorts of work to the existing structure. And that then requires that the entire first floor, being the basement, be raised above uh, the floodplain. Um, and that alone is going to jack the price way up as well. We also have no idea about zoning compliance because there was no site plan submitted. What we do know is that best case scenario for them, what they show is that they are 36 square feet away from exceeding FAR. Now that, when I say best case scenario, that's when I just add up quote unquote livable area on the assessor field code, which very likely doesn't account for the fact that there's going to be an internal staircase removed adding livable area. Uh, and livable area also doesn't include um, the entryway. Uh, and so it doesn't take a lot of area to get up over 36 square feet. And I would submit that at a minimum there should be a stamped engineered plan stating what the FAR is going to be for this addition when they come back for the special permit that's clearly required under the ordinance. We also don't know for sure what other violations there might be, setback or what, what have you, because we, again, we have no, set, no uh, site plan. Uh, there are a lot of other problems with this, but I, I feel like there's really not much more that needs to be said about this. This board was so clear in rejecting the exact same proposal just set off from the existing house a few feet. And by the way, the police raids continue. There was one a month ago. So I don't know why there would be such an urge or desire to help this particular property owner get around the requirements of the law. And I would ask the board to overturn the issuance of the building permit and require that new plans be submitted with a special permit application to comply with the ordinance. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I got a million of them, really. Here's what I'm, and, and, and you know how we vote in the lot. Um, it's like, the guy who's been sitting here 20 something years knows the building code 10 times better than I do. And whatever that person did, I, I'll swear on my mother's grave that Mr. Duca did not do nothing to make this happen. That's, he's not that guy, I know. But whatever this person did and whoever they hired to, to get around this law, I think really should be in a court of law. That's what I believe. I believe this should be going to land court uh, and those decisions. We, we had a guy that's been here for 20 years and knows, like I said, the law probably better than anyone here sitting at this table. And I don't even know, uh, Mr. Carlin, I'm going to ask for his response on this because I want to hear his response. These guys have been in this business a long time. They should know the rules. Now, whoever 
that around those rules, maybe we're going to start looking at zoning and tightening up all these things. And not maybe, should be, could be, this is in your windows. It's not right. It's not right. Spot zoning, all that other stuff that, you know, they're trying to just, we, we got to do something with zoning. We really have. And you're right. I, I agree. There's a lot of things, but the laws are the laws. The laws are above me. So I don't have any questions. I, I tried to figure this out myself. Uh, and I know Mr. Duke, and I swear to his honesty, they come in with the paperwork and he gave them a term. And someone pretty smart out there drew it up because they knew where we were coming. That's, that's mine. I don't know if anyone has any questions, thoughts. You know, lawyer right well, here, Mr. Chin. Of course. Uh, section 815 there, you put uh, FDB proposed construction expansion 25%, a ground average allowed on the 8155 as foot per You said 106. This is 108. Is it 108? I'm sorry. I, I must have misspoken. I was going off memory. Okay. It's probably that's all right. But it's 108. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it's the difference between 1760, which is the proposed um, square footage for it. I, I didn't do the calculation of the actual, you know, first floor area that was okay. the engineer, so I would try okay. it. So it's 100. I would go with 180. Okay, thank you. Well, my understanding of uh, some of the issues is that there's a, there's a disparity in, the, in terms of how one reads and interprets the uh, DFP of the ordinance. So I can't question and, and say one side's reading is correct and the other side's reading is incorrect. That is something that I think a judge would, like you said, Malay quite possibly, might be better able to determine, maybe after taking testimony and so forth. Mm -hmm. It's difficult for this board to make a decision when interpretation of ordinances and I do appreciate that. All, I guess all I'll say is, unfortunately, that's why they pay you guys the big bucks. That's what the statute, the, the statute says this board has to make that determination in the first instance. Um, and I, I would just come back to all of the term, all of the rules of statutory construction that apply to ordinances um, say that you use common sense. First and foremost, you use common sense and you, you, you look at the intent of the ordinance and you look at similar definitions. And so common sense, what, what common sense does it make to say, to have a 25% uh, trigger for a special permit, but say, yeah, just lift it up a foot and you're fine. And that doesn't apply and you can cover the entire property without getting a special permit. You're still creating you're dramatically changing runoff and flood control. You're still putting your foot in that puddle mm -hmm. and pushing all the water everywhere else, even if you don't put it all the way down to the floor. So, and you have a very similar term in the ordinance that is defined. And I cited case law out of Nantucket that defines the exact term as the first floor area. So there's nothing there's nothing out there that would support the notion that you don't look at the first floor area. And there are a lot of things that would support the notion that you do. Um, first and foremost, the purpose of your ordinance. Um, so I, I, I completely understand how you feel about that. And I guess I would just say, unfortunately, uh, the law looks to this board to make that determination. Um, and, and you know, I, I've been doing this a long time too. My partner wrote the ordinance. Um, I understand the reluctance. And at the same time, I, I would urge the board to apply common sense, to apply the definition that is in the bylaw, in the ordinance, and, um, and ask you to overturn the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Carlin, yeah. you had a letter here and you want to read it into the record for the dispute. You have it. Yeah, everyone has this. If you go up there, please read it. You need this one? Yep. Yeah, 
square feet, respectively, for a total of 3,500 square feet of the local area. The FAR is calculated by dividing the gross floor area by the lot size. 3,500 square feet divided into 8,701 square feet is 0.4 the floor area ratio. 8,701 is the actual lot size according to the ground survey done by the cell firm. The assessor's information is accurate. The assessor makes no deductions for scale loss. The second floor of the existing building is larger first floor area is the first floor because it has a cantilever. Basins and accessory structures are exempt from the FAI calculations. In summary, the ISD's practice of issuing past and present building permits in the flood zone without the need for a special permit where the actual ground coverage is less than 25% is a well-established past practice that complies with the floodplain ordinance, the floodplain only ordinance. I respectfully ask the board to consider the ramifications to other property owners if they were to Vote to all of this fair and consistent task practice. I appreciate the good work the board does, and I trust the board will carefully review the appeal and I support their decision. Sincerely, Jay Duke, I'm pulling to work for my estate. Thank you. Attorney Silverstein and, and Jay. And uh, when, if when we let it stand, it's going to end up in court. If we rescind it, it's going to end up in court. Correct? No, I don't know. I don't know about it. Rescind it. I don't know what will happen. I mean, Are they going to take it to court? Maybe you know, that's my two cents. I just, and, and I felt the same way from the beginning. I really did reading this. And I'm going, you know, here's a guy I trusted for years to, to take his interpretations of the law. Uh, could I say just one thing quickly? Really quickly. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to be really clear. What we're asking for is not that they not be allowed to build it, but that they have to come in for a special permit and prove that they're not going to be burning any further. We're asking that you find that a special but permit is required. What did we grant? No, we didn't. We didn't grant nothing. We didn't grant nothing. They went down, read the law a little different, come in with other paperwork, and Mr. Duca said, you're right, you can have a permit. And he gave him a permit. Oh, so he gave him a permit. Because there wasn't a second structure then. Right? No. Oh, okay. Your interpretations of all this stuff, too, as the new director. I've gone along with Jay's interpretation of years, that there's no sense in beating them up twice. If they go to conservation and it's on peers, mm -hmm. the whole... The whole reason for the floodplain overlay district is not to affect other properties. If there's no foundation, you haven't changed anything. This is land subject to coastal storm flowage. You're not going to stop the ocean 
And we've done about, I'm going to say 12, 15 of these, haven't we? We've done quite a few just in this area. Yeah. We just did one a few minutes ago on Post Island. No, no, I'm, I know that. I'm, I'm just, we're going to have flow tools and all that. I, I'm talking about piers. Like, like, yes, we've done a number of them. Like, yeah, all the way down to Nile Gab. All right, uh, it's up to us guys to make a decision. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I'm going to vote Mr. Duper and let it go. It's just they gotta, they got to do what they got to do and you guys know I just, I believe he read the law. And he read the law. He ain't gaining anything out of this. The guy, what would he gain out of it? Zero. Zero to give someone a permit. So in his opinion, he believed they should have got a permit. So, no, you're out. Is there, a, is there an opposition to your No, we heard. We don't have to have we've, heard, we've heard the other. That's who we are. So people, we already know what the people think because we already declined the building they had. True. So, we know they don't want it. We know that. I, I didn't like it. A lot of guys in the board did not like it, but I. I do believe Mr. Duker did his due diligence and he had it in him apparently. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know what about that? It, it's, it's, you're out of order. So, I'm just going to vote with Mr. Duker and, and not, not accept the, uh, you're not, you can be wild all you want. Someone's trying to talk to you the board. So, if you're going to be disruptive, please leave. Very simple. We're making a decision. The next to it, I feel, go to court. Go to court with a court, that's what they do. That's where they go. Money, cost money, cost money to everything. I get it, Mr. DeBond. So, we don't have any, uh, we're not making a decision based on the condition of, you know, the lease agreement that they have or don't have, we're making a decision on the building permit. A building permit, yeah. See, we have the right to give a building permit. Uh, but that's here. what the question is. I've been up here 10 years and, and have trusted Jay implicitly, and I will continue to trust Jay. Uh, so I will. Uh, Mr. Duke, I'll be voting. Have nothing to me. Yeah, I'll be voting to. Uh, if anything, it probably bothered him because it's pretty after affirm, he knew how we felt about it. Affirm, that's that's the way I'm looking at it. Like he gave a permit away that he probably didn't want to, and he goes like that. Sorry, guys, but they have a right. And that's his law. That's his determination of law. Not what mine is. No, we're not, we're not up here to vote on whether or not they manage a bad property. We're up here to support or not support Jay's decision to issue a permit to sell. Correct? That's right. Uh, because we have to support the former special services director. Well, he gave a lot of them out. Well, that's the thing. I, you know, there's a lot of precedence for mm -hmm. having issued permits like this. Right. Uh, historically, it's been allowed in the city. Um, Mr. Duca follows ordinances. He follows <clears throat> the interpretation that he's required to follow by the powers above him. Um, this, I'm not prepared to overturn his precedent. Uh, I think that's what courts are for. And either way we go, it may end up in court, as Charlie indicated. And the courts can hear both sides and decide whether um, it was a misinterpretation of the ordinance. Could very well be. Might Maybe not, but that's not for me to decide. I'm going to have full decision. Comments? Yeah, up. same. No, same mm -hmm. thing. I, there's two opinions, different opinions. I'm not. I don't think I'm in a position to determine which one's correct and which one's incorrect. And that I, I I agree with what your opening statement was. It just more more than likely ends up in land court so that they can get a confirmed mm -hmm. opinion of the both sides of the argument. I, I, both opinions are there. I, I, yeah. I, gotta, I would vote to uphold it. Just right. Duke's opinion. Before we do that, I know how this board feels. I'd like the council, if you would like to say a few words yeah. for the neighborhood since you've been involved in this. Yeah. Sorry, council. Uh, then we got in the middle of the way when you wrote it. And we all hope that 15, 17 sure has been going on for a while. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Attorney Silverstein makes some great points, and, and everybody here, um, you know, works hard and, and leans heavily on the Jay Dukas, the Rob Conlins, to uh, to try to do the right thing. Um, Dave DeBonner and myself 
were both in Mr. Duca's office about this situation. I was probably in there three or four other times trying to figure out how to make this either work or not work. And Jay, um, Jay did his homework. Um, and I respect what you're talking about, about rescinding um, and, 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 and um, not having that, that extra step that you know that it's going to go to to court, as um, Charlie was saying, uh, uh, regardless to land court. Uh, but um, uh, you know, I keep swaying away from zoning a little bit here, and and and, um, and I had talked to the chairman, um, Mr. Aikens, a little bit about that neighborhood, and 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 the house itself, and the owner that doesn't occupy it. Um, I'm very disappointed that you know. That owner isn't here. That owner must realize that 15, 17 Jewett is taking a beating, and it should, uh, by the neighbors, uh, because of the activity down there. And I won't get into it. There's been plenty of calls, and, and Attorney Silverstein mentioned, um, you know, a month ago, and that was the Boston police come. That wasn't even Quincy. Uh, if I mention 15, 17 Jewett to the Quincy police, they know exactly what I'm, I'm talking about. So it disappoints me a little bit. Um, in regards that they they seem like they, they keep getting away with it, they're benefiting somehow, uh, and, and it's at the expense of the neighbors who um, who are, are, are concerned. I wouldn't want that on my street either, and I'm, I keep trying trying to figure out how how to curb it a little bit. Last night I met um, with some members of the city solicitor's office, and we were trying to take a look at that uh, in regards to. Uh, being disorderly and blight, and, and I know the first um, 14 Nelson Street, you talked a little bit about um, curbing that gentleman in regards to the place. It's not like it's, um, you know, Augusta National down there, that house. It's not taken care of it at all. Uh, it, it's beat up, it'll get worse, and, and the person won't, the person doesn't care about it. So even if it was whatever decision you make, one way or the other, and, and it goes forward. Um, I look at it as that owner out there in, in wherever they live, uh, not in Quincy and not in House Neck, is looking like, well, we got away with it again. And um, uh, too bad for Jewett Street, they're going to have to put up with it. And the, the most we can do, as I talked to the solicitor's office, is that inspectional services just out there pounding them all the time if there's something wrong. And, you know, you don't want that either. That disturbs the neighborhood. So um, I respect all the work you guys have done. I'm up here a lot, and it's been, you know, um, the good, the bad, the ugly up here, and um, I, I understand um, the position you're in. And I really respect Jay Duca. Uh, all the times that I've been in here with him, even not 15, 17 Jewel, but a lot of other things, he takes the time, he'd go through everything, and never really come out with one way or the other, he'd try to go, Letter of the law on what he thought it was. So uh, I know you got a hard decision tonight. I, I really support the neighbors, though. I think <coughs> Attorney Silverstein did a great job presenting. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing this get rescinded and and go into land court with the idea that you know maybe they look at it and say, gee, the, the board really took a good look at this. Um, I think if it goes in the way it does, it probably gives it a little. I don't know if it gives it positivity or not from the board. But I wouldn't want to see that. I'd like to see when the decision happens. It's even Stephen. So, uh, and I know again, we've done plenty of these, Chairman. We've done plenty of these situations, uh, as Mr. Conlon said over the past um, number of years. So, thank you. Counselor, you, you know when we were talking on the phone the other day, you said the Boston Police. I just thought you were, you know, didn't you? You know, and you said it again. Down in the Boston Police went down there? Yeah, there was a robbery. Um, don't know all the ins and outs. Um, I've got Quincy looking at it. I've got Quincy looking at that house all the time now. But they came down, there was stolen property. Uh, unlocked. Oh, 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 I thought they came down because something happened. Uh, yeah, they were chasing the guy that 15, <laughs> 17 drew it again. It all leads to 15, 17 drew it. Why, why hasn't the owner thrown them out and getting tempted? I mean, it's been going on for years. I'm going to work with, with Jim Timmons in the solicitor's office to look at it more and more. And maybe it's something, as we, and I know Councilor Mahoney, I think she's still here. 
we, we voted the other night to do an analysis of zoning across the board. Maybe there's a tweak in there too that talks about situations like this that not only you have a, a zoning opportunity here to go one way or the other, but you know, as you guys pointed out with 14 Nelson, like straighten your act up yeah. and uh, you know, yeah. and make it a, a, a nice home and nice neighbors. And, and, and I'm, I'm sure the street would have a different opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Council? Thank you. Thank you. So this has been going on for quite some time, for two years. This this applicant came in and did not have the correct deed. Mm -hmm. It did not have the correct applications. It changed it changed its mind. When it went to when it went to conservation, conservation put some tags on it too saying that it had to have special permitting because it was the other firm. It has had special conditions every step of the way. One of the things that I'm really bothered by, and, and I, I'm very much in the same situation where I know all of you work very hard, I know it's difficult, and I'm not here to say whether or not, you know, Commissioner Duga did something right or wrong, but it was on his last day at two o'clock that he gave a special permit to somebody that has gotten special conditions as he's gone along. When you were here the last time, when we were here the last time, I was not here because I had COVID, so I couldn't come. But one of the things that you said was it was, it was, um, it was, it was, Substantial detrimental to the neighbor. Basically, what you were saying in the zoning code, it was saying that this neighbor, this developer, this person who owns this property was not taking care of it. Just like we talked about on Elm Street. But the problem I'm having is this is, and I know that the commission can give out a special permit, but you as the board can also say no and let them go in land court because this neighborhood has spent twenty thousand dollars on lawyers. And what you're saying is, I don't feel comfortable as your board, I don't feel comfortable, let them go to land court. Let the neighbors, let the citizens of the city of Quincy pay out of their pocket to go to land court. Well, why don't we let the developer pay out of their pocket? Because yeah. right now, Whoa. this is what's right. right. And our citizens can't afford it. And this is the point of it needs to be able to represent our citizens. It used to be a time that when you came up here and neighbors said, this is not the development we want, zoning, and we do have zoning laws. Mm -hmm. We do. That's right. And I have to tell you, that you know, looking at it and saying, I you know, I think Jay Duca did the greatest job in the world. Well, there's some questions here. There's some questions here, and I think it should lean towards the developer. Let them take it to land court. Don't ask the neighbors to do that. That is our job as citizens of Quincy. Yeah, it is. It I, is. I didn't it, say it wasn't. It is, but I'm just you're, saying you're I'm very offensive about this because it comes down to myself because it's but been you're two years. that council like it's it's a different question. The question is. Did he have a right to give a permit? Yes or no? That's the question. Yep. Not whether I like anyone, don't like it. We didn't like the project, remember? I do remember. Okay. And you said no to the project. Okay. I watched okay. it from home, from my dad with COVID. And now you're asking me to say, that guy didn't have a right to do what he did. You're going to put that on me. No, I'm not, because I think he did his job. Duke did his job. Right on. That was on the last job. day of the job. Hey, he should have said no. I don't know the next commissioner. I have no idea. The next commissioner should be able to do it on the last day of your job when you're leaving your job on that day. When people don't so know about it. So the neighbors. So council, what you're know. saying is he did something wrong. That's what, what I'm, I'm saying. saying is that you, you as this board, have a right. What I'm saying is you, as this board, have a right to rescind this and let it go to court and let the developer. You've been around long enough. I have been around long enough, and I'm disappointed. Then you're going to actually put this on the well, taxpayers of the city of Quincy. Not that. As you're to asking work. me to say that the guy in there did a wrong job. I don't think he did. I think he did his job. Okay. Well, I will with say what he had. At a special meeting that we had over the summer in this in this building, when we were asking this question, that he was suggesting that exactly what was presented. Two different and, things nope, again. Yes, what you was are. Presented, it's two different things. Nope, what was presented to us was we were told that it would be too expensive for the developer to be able to do exactly what they're doing, and what was presented by by Mr. Mr. Silverstein was exactly that, that it's coming in underneath a number and that they're not going to be required to have, you know, to have the cement problems or to be able to do certain things when they're developing this. That's what's happening. So your accusation nope. is Mr. Duca last day made it happen and it's wrong. That's what you're saying. I'm, I'm saying, saying that we would be told to make a decision. No, I think you're throwing gas on the fire person. at the end there. That's what you're doing. Yeah, no, you're throwing gas on the end. I'm yes, not throwing are. gas in the end. Yes, you are. You actually you have every opportunity to that. That's not the back. issue here. Yes, the issue is. is, did he have the right to make that permit, give that permit? Simple, yes or no. That's what the question is here tonight. Nothing else. There is nothing else here. There is something. No, else. there is. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're making it something. No, else. I'm not making yeah, it. Yeah, you are. Else. No, no you I'm are. Not. Actually, Excuse I'm not. Excuse me, you are. No, I'm not. Thank you for okay. speaking. You're welcome. Call it power Over. So, let's get into a vote.
Can I have a motion, please? And we can vote accordingly. Name, name, Justice 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 ZBA 2316, Jonathan Silverstein, Esquire, for administrative appeal, the issuance of a permit to allow the construction of addition to an extensive renovation and extensive renovations to the existing dwelling on the premise number 15 Jewett Street, Quincy, and make a motion to deny, deny the appeal. Second. On the motion, seeing that, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Pass. Five minutes. Take five minutes, guys.
they send you a card and like that. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? So he truly is. Like it's hard to say that Jane is a bad person. That was the question. Tonight's agenda is EBA 2317, training management for finding to install a six foot safety fence, privacy fence, on Rogers Street side of 47 Paul Place. The African representative there? Yes, Damon Adams, huh? Yes. I'm Damon Adams for the record. Live with uh, 47 Paul Place with me. All right, what do you want to do? I'm looking to install a uh, six foot fencing uh, just from the uh, half of my house all the way to the, uh, to the driveway. Now, you're going past your driveway too? No, 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 just driveway? right at the corner of the driveway, where it's connected to the, uh, just to the driveway. That's it. No, not going past the driveway. Uh, where's it going to stop? Uh, going to start, uh... From um, the corner, because you can't see over a six foot fence. Right, we're not, we're not going to do anything on the corner, especially my house is situated on the, on the corner. It won't shut uh, the other site. Right. The turn and everything, so we're going to start at the, uh, the side door of the, uh, of the house. That would be the side back door of the house, and it carries all the way to. That's about 20 feet back, right? Uh, I think I think so because it's a long. It's, it's pretty. I know. Long. I got a picture. I'm just. I yes. just got to go back and look and yeah. you know, see where I am. Uh, I thought like if we kept it about 12 feet back in the corner, it should be plenty robbed for that. So this is the end of your house. Tomorrow. Yes. So uh, 12. He wants to put up the six foot fence. Yeah. I'm saying if he's back 12 feet, yeah, at least 12 feet. Yeah, he's back about 20 something right after that. Well, what, what did we say? Like on a corner like that, 12 feet? Do you want the 12 feet in the corner? Yeah, he's back out of the window. Because this guy here, yeah, so he's back he's oh, 15 yeah. feet back yeah. in his house. He stops all the way down. You know what I'm saying? People are fishing at least down. Are you trying? Yeah. All right. Yeah, looking at it like even you think you're gonna be that stack twenty feet at least. at least. So if you go at least fifteen, it'll look like the neighbors and it'll look like they're both stacked the same and go back and find room for people to at least some not to go and come around the corner. Right. All right? So you're saying match the across the street now? Yeah, there's fifteen, they're fifteen feet back. Okay. From the edge. I mean, see what he's saying? Yes, so basically the same thing. Yeah, yes. come close, close, close to the hall. Right. Yeah. Right. So, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come like at least 15, keep it 15 feet back. Set a stop and out your walk. On the lot line. Yes, exactly. Then so, people can see around the corner for cars coming. If you guys going 30. Because you were going to stop at your walkway, is that what your plan was? Yes, but it's going, to be, it's going to be like a slope slanted. Okay. Like 45, okay. so we'll, we'll be visible. Okay. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. You're going to keep the six foot part back, minimum of 15 feet, correct? I understand. Is that. Uh, you said you're going to slope it down. Right. Cut. So the six foot piece. Yes. Go back a minimum of 15 feet from the corner of your lot line. Yes. And you can. So you can not four. start there. Right. Like if you got a three footer going up to the six foot, right? Right. Start, you just start at six foot, 15 feet back, so you can see right. From the whole foot. Yes. What yeah. you're already going to be. Right. No what, what confusing you? <laughs> <laughs> what confusing me too? So I have no questions. Yeah, no questions. You can have a seat. Does anyone want to speak in favor? Thank you. You're welcome. Have a seat. Take you some more questions. Council? Hello. Hello. James Lai, 117 Cross Street. Uh, yeah, I walked uh, neighbor with the uh, neighbor, nice guy. Uh, the property next door, you already know, has a similar fence. Uh, I believe he really doesn't want to go that far anyways, but I'm sure it might look nice, so we'll start it that way. So I'm uh, very much in favor of it. Uh, a woman by the name of Patricia Mortimer uh, had uh, just a concern to make sure that it didn't obstruct the owner view. I spoke with her and I said that he had no intention to doing that, and she said, uh, great. So, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you for your work. Anyone else want to speak in favor? Yeah, you got to come up, name and address. Put on the record, listen here. 
Because it goes into a microphone so we can hear it. We got to look back at the tape. My name's Albert Vaughn. I live at 48 Hall Place, and I'm here to support. Is he buying you dinner tomorrow? No. Wait, no. no. <laughs> He's a great name. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else want to speak in favor? John? This is your moment. Your moment. I have a question. Uh, John Rufel, he's New Ground Mall Road. Do um, you need permission to build a fence? Yeah, six feet. Or is it because they're on the corner? That's why. So if, you, if you're not on the corner, you don't need permission? No, yeah, well, you can't go over six. If you're going eight feet. You need yeah, I know if you go eight feet, but the building is six feet. It's because it's on the line. Okay. Um, I'm, well, I'm in favor of him building a fence. Thank you. So, okay. Anyone else? Last call? Call up how the hearing closed. Letter from the DPW? Uh, now, they review these projects, have no comments. Is there anyone opposed you on the side? First call, second call, third call, close. How many minutes? Hey. Hey. Yes. I have two. GDA 2317, Lane 10, we are to install a six foot fence on the larger side of the premise number 47, Hall Place, Quincy. I make a motion to grant the finding as long as it's 15 feet back from Hollis. Second. On the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Further on the tonight's agenda. ZBA 2318. Help me with this, Councilor. Rashid. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll look You got it. I only know because I made sure I. Practice in five minutes before that. It's rich. Actually, rich. Uh, rich. Oh, rich. 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 Okay. It goes back. Uh, special permit constructed two story, two oh. residential units above the existing commercial building with an extension over the driveway in the front of the center of 110 Franklin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that in the uh, historic district? You know, I, I thought not initially. Mm -hmm. Uh, because there's actually two maps. There's one map that's on the, um, Here we go. the, the GPS, the GIC um, yeah. web, city website that shows that there's a trail from the Adamsburg place down right. to the, um, the Quincy Center um, yes. Historic District. But evidently there's another map that uh, Mr. Fatsy's uh, suggests the five that they, that uh, I'm not sure it was known or whatever right. when, when there was another project that, that right. was uh, that shows that it is within that. So I think there's some clarification that, that needs, but it appears as though, yes, it is in the historic so district. So before we you want to do this, you want to check with them? Well, um, yeah, I'd like to make a little presentation. Maybe we can continue the meeting to another to another night. Right. Uh, right. I spoke yeah. with Mr. Fatsy. He said that the right. historic commission is meeting Thursday. I don't know if I'll be able to get on the agenda by right. then. Guys, is that all right? Yeah. Go yeah, through that? Sure. Fine. Right. So, listen, I, uh, Rich came to me. Mm -hmm. He's a small business owner. Mm -hmm. He owns a barber shop. I know you have a photo. You should have a photo in your, yeah. your package. Everybody knows uh, the barber shop. It's, it's very successful. Mm -hmm. He's an extremely hard working gentleman. Uh, it's a small lot. I granted, when he came to me, I said, I don't know. You're, 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 you're asking for. for Quite a bit there, but then he explained, and and I talked to the wood counselor uh, Anthony Andronico, who seemed to think it might be a good fit for the neighborhood. And I know he's written the board a uh, an email. Some people have commented favorably. He has a uh, number of neighbors who have written letters and support. What he wants to do is have him and his family live about their small business that he works very hard. Now there's big major development going on yeah. on Franklin Street. Here's a small guy who works hard every day, has a small business, and is just trying to put residents above his property so that he and his family can live right where they're, right where they're, uh, right where he works and where he's working. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at it, uh, by the way, the neighbor that uh, just received uh, relief from this board uh, for uh, development the property in the rear as well as redeveloping their, their front property uh, supports this project as well. Uh, and they sent me an email of support. I'm not sure if it's in the record, but I'll forward it to the, uh, to the board. Uh, 
board uh, tonight when I get home. Uh, other members, uh, uh, there's another uh, neighbor on uh, 177 Franklin Street that, that wrote a letter in support as well. So if you look at it, at first, the proposal, uh, the thought was that they were going to have almost like a carport below. There's already parking if you're looking at the building on the left hand side. The way, yeah, at least two. I mean, you can put five, but how are you going to get in and out? So yeah, you can't exactly. do more than two cars. That, that's right. exactly right. So this, this, it, we would definitely need to leave with regards to parking. But it, it's in law. Yeah, no, I, I understand, <laughs> but you're, you're talking about an area that's being developed that's on, on a main street. It's exactly. mixed use, it's appropriate mixed use. It's a business that's been around for some time. Uh, it's a small businessman that needs the relief. And, you know, the size of the lot, while I understand it's small, it's really not taking up any more than what the building is taking up any uh, currently, if you include the parking on the left, which is being used as parking right now. It's the same footprint. Um, there was some comments. Um, I had discussions with, with Rob about uh, windows because it was so close to the property line on the left. By the way, the building on the left is going to be at least eight to ten or even more feet away from their property line. And they support this project, by the way. And it will be fully sprinkled. So that kind of alleviates the issue with regards to windows. However, uh, Rich would be willing to, to try to go back to the drawing board and maybe kick the second floor back a little bit so that the windows uh, wouldn't be an issue. In any event, they'd have to comply with the code, so if, if the windows are an issue, that right. it would have to be dealt with through the building department one way or the other. So if you, if you take a step back and you look at it, you look at the whole area, you know, and drive by there and see what it looks like right now, the development that's going on across the street at Dunkin' Donuts and then behind with the barn, um, there, there, was, there, was, there was another project that was right off of uh, Franklin Street, and the one right to the right of them. He sees this construction going on all over the place, all around him. The facade, although it's nice, and a lot of people commented that it, was, it looked very nice, may down. not quite fit with the historic commission, and that's not a problem either. And, you know, I know that Mr. Al Kalulawa uh, is willing to, you know, have his architect go back and change the facade to comply with the um, with the historic commission but he does have significant support for this project i know there were some comments one was about the, the look of the building which you know certainly can be uh remedied uh the setback is the setback it's where it is now uh, so it's a pre-existing non-conforming structure as it is and we're really adding two, two two stories on top of it. So the parking, I would suggest, is the primary is the primary concern. And in closing that parking lot is, is um, you know, I mean, you have, as far as the businesses go, there's, there's coffee break right next door, no parking. There's uh, another business, I forget the name of it, no parking. Uh, so, you know, the, the business itself isn't, you know, necessarily uh, a problem with regards to parking. But two units for two spaces uh, is what we're asking for. But they're not overly large units. And the intent is to have uh, Rich and his, and his uh, parents move into both of those units. Uh, and they're going to be there long term. Granted, not forever, but, but long term nonetheless. So um, if the board would like to sit and you know maybe digest and consider it and then uh, reconvene on it, maybe we'll be able to get uh, even more support between now and but then. For the and counts to me, it's not support if you come in here with 10,000 people. I couldn't support two apartments on top of that place with no problem. I could maybe do one for them to live there and have their business in two parking spaces. Two apartments? So you're, we're short two parking spaces. But, but, it, but it's this. But two. it's this. It's like with all that development down there, if you took two, 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 no one would be able to park for his business. I appreciate it. But the developments, and not to 
push back. It definitely don't want no, to get I get it. I get it. But the developments that are being proposed are multi multi uh, unit developments, right? Right. I, I, and I understand it has the same impact. This is a small guy with a small business. I get it. That, that's just looking to have his family move in. And I think that this, this should be some consideration and some um, appreciation for the mm -hmm. fact that, um, you know, although it's a small lot, there's two parking spaces. You know, by the way, if you look at the, the, the photo Wait, that you two, have, it's two if, he didn't enclose the, if he didn't enclose it to make it look better, it could be driven right through and you could have four parking spaces. But you couldn't. There's no way. You can't get in and out. So it's, it's well, tandem it would parking. Be tandem. They're no good. Well, you can have, what if, do you use them? Well, they're not. Four for their family. For their family, they can have four. Well, that's you not can't have problem. another person No, 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 no. They, they, that's what uh, Rich is going to live on the second floor. His, his parents are on the second, mm -hmm. on the third floor. So it's the same family. Believe me, it's the same it, family. You know, but here's what I'm trying to say, and I, I get what you're saying, but there's people that come down here and they want to enroll our apartment for their, for their own. They can't have it. It's against the way they want it. It's against the rules. Like, because now they, they leave or die, now you got an apartment. So what do you do? You make it in common. They're going to have to make an apartment in common. One apartment. In this That's street, what I'm looking for. In this street park, uh, for, for at night when, when. Oh, of course it is. When the business all of a sudden you're home all day and there's a couple other people home all day and all of a sudden it's those pockets. It's not for today. I don't think like that. I don't think like it's about when it's built no, and they're there. That. I think for 30 years down the road, what's going to happen? Those people are going to have five kids up there or three kids and, a, and a, then you got their 15, 16, 17, 18, you got four or five cats. Where are they? Oh, they're in Franklin Street. Where's the other five? They're in Franklin Street. Now he's trying to open up a business because he dies and he's, and, he's, and he's getting his hair cut. There's no place for people. They just keep going. They go undone. The business is gone. So I hear the comments. I'm just on the trying and to I work that. with you, but it's, I like, understand. It's, 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 it's hard. I, I understand hard. that. Uh, you know, we, uh, if, if it's possible, maybe we could put it on for a further hearing. We go yeah. back, we take a look at it. We, 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 I talked with Jim on the uh, historic site and then mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to know that I'd like to know what they say and what they're doing with the building because if it is I wouldn't I wouldn't want to bring that I don't think they would like that. No no I I, I no uh, I, I appreciate that. That's what it wasn't clear that it was in the historic right. district because well, of the issue that of the was right. I was I was gonna I you're on the GPS yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean he's not wrong. It's it's uh, clearly marked as just being yeah. you know like Right. And and there's a walking trail, like you said, right? right? That and it you, actually crosses over to the other side. It crosses over to the other side, side before right. you. I was like, because I was like, I, I, I don't think we brought up the historic district on that other building. Like no, North, no, Northern. No, that we Northern don't. Dunkin' Donuts is going to be right yeah. across the street. Yeah, and, and that and closest to the Adams house. The, 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 the Dunkin' yeah. Donuts is actually on the side of the road where the trail is, yeah. which yeah. crosses right. the street. So I, I would I would agree. I wouldn't have thought it was. Um, I my own comments are I I, I I actually really liked the building when I looked at it. Uh, I thought it was it, I thought it's a really nice building. I thought, yeah. um, well, we had an issue with the roof deck down there, I believe, on that other one. Yep. I think there was a lot of people that yeah. so I think you know um, that would be one area of concern I would have if you had, and I understand you were trying to have some exterior living space off there, but you know it basically is in the backyard. It's a bright book. Uh, and I know we had an issue on that, so I would probably, I wouldn't even consider that okay. aspect, just just my own opinion, just because of how much pushback we had on the one adjacent. Um, and then I, 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 I'm less of a stickler on the parking. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't disagree that I don't think it's enough, but at the same time, I think that it's a different world. Uh, so I'm less of a stickler. you need a haircut. <laughs> Yeah, well, some of us don't have to worry about that. <laughs> if, I keep, if I have to stay on this board, I won't need much longer. Much longer so. We're having a break. <laughs> Current available parking, that, that's not used for customers, right? That, that's no, that's, that's, that's issues for the yeah. owner. The customers don't, do not use that. And if you look, you can probably, in tandem, again, at least four cars. I pulled in there and using my car in 20, 15 seconds. My face, what are you doing? He <laughs> <laughs> goes, relax, relax. <laughs> City. <laughs> She's parking for me. 
about height? 41 feet. No, you're taking the roof deck off. No, it was off the bat, though. It's really not an additional story. No, it's just no. That's, that's, that's the height of the fence and stuff. Five feet. Well, the peak looks like it's 41. It'll be 35. I think it's 34. 34 feet. Yeah, it's not a very high roof. That's true. And yeah. in that, in that, in that and I would also say that in that, that district, in that surrounding now. business area, there are a number of buildings that are considerably higher than that that building itself. I know. We, right, so. I think it's 30, 34 feet to the top of the yeah. We go to page 84, it says 41. That's what the roof thing. That's what the roof thing. Uh, the the galvanized peak. Oh, well, maybe it isn't. You're right. You're right. It's got a good roof, right? Yep. Yeah. I think that was, I don't know if that was up there. I think every other apartment will come right down. Okay. See how it's up. All so right. Uh, I'd ask that you continue this program. Right, uh, people are here. I just want to hear some oh, people. Sure. Let, we'll go through all that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, is there anyone want to speak in favor? First call? Second call? Third call, no, we had a letter from the DPW, of course, in the area. Oh, <laughs> and what is the DPW, they reviewed the project and have no comment. Wow. I think they were talking about the store or something. Wow. I don't know. I don't think they're going to be able to put that super Dunkin' Donuts there. Well, it's going to be built like the, uh, you know, right. Yeah, yeah. Flatboard, yeah. You know, they're going to really yeah. change their brand. Change the brand. Is there anyone here opposed or undecided? First of all, Mom? You hear me out of the record? Yep, my name is um, David Jacobs. I live at 10 Charles Street in Quincy. Right, Mr. Jacobs, sure. Yeah, so um, saw the project online. Uh, all in favor of the project. I thought you did a great job. I believe it's just trying to help the guy out. Um, the only thing is, is I don't think it, like you said, I don't think it fits in with the neighborhood that's there. Um, I worked nine years for the National Park Service, uh, four years here in Quincy, and I also served on the Quincy Historic Commission for six years. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, as someone who worked for the National Park Service, worked at the Adams Houses, you know, the number one complaint that people really have when they come here is how developed it is around the places. And there's nothing we can do about that. It's, it's already happened, you know. But I think as we're moving forward and we're seeing new construction there, I think we have the opportunity to kind of tweak things to make it look, you know, a little better. Like people always comment about the service station across the street, you know. It's like, well, the service station's been this since what, You know what I mean? So um, I just think we have an opportunity here to make it look a little bit more. Is it brick? Is the building brick? It is brick. Yeah, so it's, is it white? Brick. White brick? brick? Uh, white brick? Uh, it's, it's really not determined yet. Well, I know that, that that's usually the purview of the Historic Commission, but the only thing is a lot of times serving on the Historic Commission, a lot of times the CBA will pass stuff, and it'll come to the Historic Commission, I see you guys say it too, oh, you know, this was already passed by the planning board, or this was, yeah, so where Tony Ricci will say, well, you know, ZBA already looked at this, who are we to say, you know, overrule what ZBA did, or what, vice versa, you know, you, could have gone to the Historic Commission, then you guys could say, well, gee, you know, the Historic Commission already looked at this. And, uh, you know, who are we to overrule that? You know, so I just think, you know, I'm in favor of this project, the way it's proposed. I know you have an issue with parking. I find that a little odd because you sold, you know, you let Louis parking lot get sold, you know, and you weren't concerned about any parking then. I'm not really concerned. 10,000 spots down in North Town. Big giant one right across the street. So why, why would I be? So that's good. Um, so um, I'm not concerned with parking. That doesn't bother me at all. I'm going to wait until I have everybody's attention. Because that's the respect I deserve. Wasn't laughing at you, Dave. Just let me know when you're ready. Come on. So, um, so I'm just saying I'm in favor of this project. I don't think parking is an issue. Um, my father-in-law is, is a developer in Cambridge, and he thinks it's silly that we have all these parking requirements. You know, I think on-street parking is the way to go once the on-street parking fills up. Um, you know, it'll 
basically that, that's all the carrying capacity for the city. As we keep adding parking spaces for Quincy, that will increase the amount of cars that we actually have here. And I think a lot of us think, oh, we don't want on-street parking, but if we keep building parking spaces, we will keep having more cars. The only way to reduce the amount of cars that are here is to actually reduce the amount of parking that, that we have available at these people's residences. So I'm all on, in favor of on-street parking. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's a problem. But I would like to see the building you know, uh, be more architecturally friendly you know, to try and add to the historic district. Thanks for your comments. Yep. Is there anyone else? Opposed or undecided? Mr. Dunn. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Name and address for right. James. No, right there. We got a microphone. James Dunn, 7 Shoreside Road, 167 Bad Park Street. Whichever one you want to use. Uh, I'm strongly opposed to this. Anybody that I don't begrudge someone that wants to move a, their family over their business, but backing out over the sidewalk, you're talking four or five cars backing out over the sidewalk, it's just an accident waiting to happen. Okay, you talk about on street parking, I get it, but what do you do in a snowstorm? Where do they go? That's an emergency zone. You have to get the cars off the street at night. It's an emergency zone. And that project is in a historic zone, I know, because I did the project across the street with Dunkin' Donuts, which we firmly had a hard time with, with parking in the area, okay? And I won't elaborate to that. I'll just leave it at that, and I just want to go, I strongly oppose trying to stuff five pounds of stuff into a one pound bag. Thank you, Mr. Anyone else, close on your side, second call? Third call, I'll start of hearing close. Uh, you want to move this a month? Oh, I got some letters there. We're going to just, um, yeah, uh, You want to, uh, a month? You need more? No. May 9th? May 9th? May 9th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to From, uh, Councilor Andronico. Um, pass along comments you received, positive feedback, mixed use component of the proposal is mentioned, uh, as a plus. Proposal fits with ongoing project within the surrounding few blocks, added more housing, more house, keep housing prices down. Constructive feedback, proposal takes away available parking spots after the need for more spaces, too modern. Height of the buildings too tall, number of variances requested is too many. Uh, Rich Durusha, 177A Independence Ave. Uh, as a red, uh, sorry, these are in support. Um, all right, just, just, we just got them so yeah, we can yeah. go back and show them why. Uh, so Rich Garusha, 177 Independence for support as a residence. Please consider issuing a special permit, live down the street, uh, have been a patron for seven years. The owners have always maintained a clean interior and exterior appearance at the shop. Rich is exceptional, he's warm, welcoming to every community member. He's a responsible business owner and supports our local businesses in and around the The man deserves this. Please consider issuing the permit. Uh, Kevin and Taryn Geary, 10 Samoset Ave, Quincy. We'd like to address you tonight to support the redevelopment at 110 Franklin Street. It appears to be a reasonable size addition to the neighborhood. Two residential units are the picture of responsible and appropriate development to take Quincy in the right direction. Room for growth within reason. The brick facade will nicely complement other structures around it. And the garage under does a job mitigating parking concerns. Uh, Mr. Albert, I'm sorry if I watched your name. Albert Hulad has, Rich, has been a pillar of the community for years. He's a responsible, well-respected well business owner who tends to stay. But would like, just like to keep up with the road in the great city. Gerard Shea, 87 Albatross. I'm writing on behalf of Rich. Uh, taking a look at the proposal online. Where you posted, I feel like it's a great idea. Born and raised in Quincy. See how the city's grown over the years, and nice to see a guy like Rich get the same opportunity. Uh, he works hard, cares for the community, always tries to make people happy and improve things along the way. We see time and time again major developers, big guys with their opportunities, and it's heartwarming knowing Rich can be part of, of that himself and grow and capitalize like all. Uh, Edward Correa, 32 Alton Road. 
I'm writing on behalf of Rich, who I've known for over 10 years professionally and personally, he's always been a model citizen, cares about the community residents that reside in. Uh, for example, I've seen him at many times give elderly vets free haircuts to show his gratitude for people who serve this country. I've also, also witnessed Rich create a safe and welcoming atmosphere for his customers and employees. Uh, where politics, religion, and ethnicity are not discriminated against. Uh, coming forward this committee for a living area above his current establishment, due to current market prices of housing in Quincy, it'd be more feasible for him to add an addition rather than rent or purchase a unit for his relatives. He current, his current residency can only accommodate five individuals, therefore he has to find a realistic solution. And then, that's the same one, sorry. Uh, and there's one like, in opposition, this is Vincent Guarino, um, 124 Franklin Street, Quincy. Um, I'm writing a letter in opposition to the project. At 110, the project's not conforming in many ways in a historical district. The reasons for opposing this project are many. The biggest reason for opposing this project is parking. Parking relief should not be granted, nor should permission be granted. Parking situation is already a mess on Franklin. Traffic and parking problems with Dunkin' Donuts is already well known. We have multiple businesses on that block that utilize them. Parking on Franklin Street, like Coffee Break, Hancock Appliance, Boston Crematory, just to name to, just to name a few. The project directly across the street is adding three more businesses that will need parking for their clients and six residential units as well. In addition, the project right next door, 108 Franklin, is adding more storefronts from residential units. Rocco's has four employees who will need on-street parking. They all park in the driveway located at 110. It's been a burden on my business. The parking situation has been a burden on my business and my clients. It's only going to get worse. Furthermore, I'd like to see where they should not be parking in our lot or they risk being towed at the owner's expense. Thank you. Lord Pilot Hearing Clearwater, Mr. Motor from May 9th. Mr. Chairman, DBA 23-18, Rich Chalakata, for the TRS for variance. Fed finding special permits to construct a two-story, two-unit residential addition above the existing commercial building with an extension over the driveway on the premises number 110 Franklin Street, Quincy, and make a motion to move that hearing to May 9th. Second. On a motion, stand in all in favor. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Opposed? So we'll May 9th, can you let us know before hearing whatever you get from that? I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Further on tonight's Agenda DBA 2320. Barry Kremen for special permit to operate a dog daycare with the option for overnight accommodations on the premises in the 405 season. The afternoon representative here. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Attorney Barry F. Kremen, 909 Washington Street, Milton. I'm here on behalf of the applicants. Molly O'Neill and Ethan Hoyt, who both do business as Seaside Canines. The application uh, is for a special permit um, so that they can conduct their uh, have a doggy daycare business, uh, grooming and boarding uh, that they currently operate from their home. They've outgrown the space there. What's the address for that? I mean, what was the address it was at? Where they're currently at? Yeah. It is Stone Street number 45. Barry, that's our address. We're, we're in mobile. That's oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> my my property's next door. I haven't seen it. I'm saying this is bizarre. And again, the address, the address of the property that they're looking to move into is 405 C Street. It's in the business B zone. So the use is allowed by special permit from this board. Um, the, uh, my clients have uh, entered into a lease with the current owner. Uh, they have signed that lease. It's been forwarded to the landlord's attorney. We anticipate that getting executed by him within the next couple of days. I, I do believe uh, the owner is here tonight as well. Uh, what I'd like to do, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, is allow uh, Molly and Ethan to tell you all about their business and what they're looking to do. That would be great. Did you say it was a mobile business right now? Okay. Maybe you can explain all that. They pick up the phone and watch the dog over the phone. Right. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Okay.
Uh, my name is Ethan Hoyt. Uh, my wife and I have been uh, operating Seaside K9s since 2016. Uh, we started um, doing it at our home in 2018 when we bought our home in House Um Since then, we have just uh, grown the business and grown out of the space. 99% uh, of our clients are in the immediate area, House Neck, I'm sure, Germantown, uh, all within, say, walking distance to to the uh, location of 405 C Street. Um, I'm a veteran, so uh, that allows me to uh, work from home. Uh, I've got more free time, so I started giving dogs full time. Um, as a veteran, um, I'm lucky enough to serve clients who also serve the community. We have uh, a lot of local police officers, firefighters, um, city members um, whose dogs we watch. Um, a lot of these clients work long and odd shifts, sometimes 12 to 24 hours, um, and unfortunately there just isn't any sort of uh, business or option available for them to drop their dogs off at uh, during those times. Um, reload gating to uh, 405 C Street would give us roughly 1,800 square feet of um, space for the dogs to uh, properly exercise and roam with one another and socialize. Um, I, I mean, I, I see the overnight, you want to overnight, and I know there's residents to your left, there's residents to your right. And, uh, do you have a, a meter to, to know how loud dogs are at night? And are you going to insulate the building? Yes. I don't know. Yeah, I, as far as... Uh, I know I would want to hit dog barking all night long. No, I know no, it's, no. there's a big need for it. And I've got a lot of calls people support. Yeah. And, uh, I'm Lauren. Hi. I'm going to take over. Um, yeah, I'm um, married to Ethan. I live at 45 Stoughton Street in Quincy. We've been there since 2018. Um, I'm also a teacher. I've been teaching in Boston Public Schools for six years. Um, I'm constantly thinking through a lens of individualized education and accessibility for all. So I just want to talk about how these skills generalize for our mm -hmm. Seaside Canines business. Yeah. Um, each one of the dogs in our care presents different needs or challenges. And uh, for example, we have dogs that have separation anxiety, fear of motorcycles, or dogs that simply need a structured pack introduction, introduction in order to feel safe and confident in new environments and with uh, a new handler, which Ethan is able to do amazing. Um, we're able to meet those needs because we keep a low ratio of dogs to humans. So this is how I want to answer your question. Um, in my experience, excessive barking often occurs because a dog's needs are not being met. So we currently have a daily routine that we adhere to. We ensure all dogs are being socialized and stimulated physically, emotionally, mentally, and with the combination of all of our enrichment activities, we find that we're able to be proactive and caring for these dogs, and therefore they're less likely to demonstrate these unwanted behaviors like you mentioned, barking, crying, things like that. Um, we're also planning on installing uh, noise cancelling insulation in order to mitigate noise inside and then the vinyl fence will also mitigate noise outside. Um, we also plan on minimizing the amount of dogs outside at one time just in order to prevent any excessive noise from occurring to them. You know, it might sound weird or stupid, I don't know, but it's a question. You know, dogs like kids and you, you get a bad one, is there a, a time when a dog causes too many problems and you just say, I can't take this dog anymore? We do tend to that test all of the dogs in our care. Mm -hmm. um, that means we're doing a structured introduction. That means we're making sure that they do well with all of the dogs okay. that are already acclimated pack yep. members, yep. Um, as well as the people that are working with the dogs. Um, have we turned dogs away? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I mean, you know, but once in a while I'll be at the park or something just because I'm driving to I'll see a dog get out and just flip out and going after all the dogs. His well, day they, was to go get enough dogs. Maybe they didn't have enough enrich enrichment that day, Mark. Hey, I don't know. So you're um, talking about the uh, noise canceling. Where is that going to go? So that will be on the interior, um, in the insulation. Um, go ahead. No, what room? All of the rooms. Oh, good. We're 
I've got a new place. So. Yes. So Friday is done. Okay, well, as soon as that lease is signed. No, no French fries. No French fries. No French fries. Our dogs won't be happy, but no French fries. Our dog eat Any questions? Yes, yeah, so provided if you didn't do overnight, what are the general hours of your business going to be? Our business hours would be 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. That would be when clients would be dropping off or picking up their dogs. Yeah. Um, However, with the overnights, um, it really would be just the dogs, again, that are sleeping over, um, the employer or employees, depending on the ratio of dogs that are staying there. Um, it would be staffed 24-7. We're not going to let dogs go out for playtime at midnight, you know, if it's they need an emergency bathroom trip, you know, or if we walk them out on a leash, et cetera. Um, we're really only anticipating um, playtime during um, our, our core business hours. What are you looking at for like max number of dogs you have? You figured that out based on the space? Yeah. 25, and that is the same amount that was approved for the pet sitting business in Marina Bay. Okay. Yes. That's all I have. So, how many dogs would you stay over? Maximum of 25. Okay. Yes. If everyone needs them. Right. That, that would be very rare. So, I would say, yeah. I just want to understand your fencing. Um, <coughs> but, well, it looks like you have a six foot high plastic propylene fence Correct. around the uh, dog enclosure. Correct. And beyond that, you also have a wood fence that is on the lot line. Correct. Um, on the side? I believe. That's where that lake belongs to the uh, neighboring uh, property. Yeah. And there is an existing um, chain link fence yeah. on the property line. Yeah. And they did put a 10 foot setback on each side of the fence as well, so that'll help them. So, so will the whole back area of the building be um, uh, asphalt or be any grass area or something? Um, we're going to keep it the asphalt, we're going to kind of clean it up um, as far as um, grass goes. We have turf rolls that we're able to, it's not going to be permanently installed turf, it's turf that we can take out clean and sanitize and swap out turf clean ones. Okay. And as far as like shots and all that, do you That's check required. to make sure yes. everything has you to be required. done? Yep. Wait, I, I, wait, I don't wait, know. Wait. I don't know. Those are great questions. I had a dog. Maybe I'm going to get my own Some guy named Matty Aikens killed him. I killed my own dog. <laughs> Never had another dog. He went to say goodbye to me. I pushed him back and he ran and the car got caught underneath my dog. I said, I don't deserve a dog anymore. Poor guy. Just wanted to kiss her back. You got it. I think it's too warm in here. Yeah, I was sad. But I, I figured I, I'm no good with animals. All done. Now, all my friends got animals, and they all talk about taking My daughter was like 740 bucks. She went on a trip, right? Oh man, 740 bucks. If I'm off at my house, 740 bucks a week. Oh There's definitely a need for it. No, yeah, there is. There's a big need for it. There's so many people. Because, like I said, I got a lot of folks. People want to. Talk about it, and I didn't think it would. I thought there'd be a lot of people against it, but we haven't talked about that, so we'll find out. We require rabies, distemper, and four to tell the vaccinations. Mm -hmm. Is there any other licensing requirements you guys have? Did you have to go? The city of Quincy does not have federal ordinances, which okay. is why we're here for the special permit. Right. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'll say okay. Yeah. No? Nope. Mr. Chen, vote. One last question for you, and um, forgive the question. Did you say you were a veteran or a veteran? Veteran. <laughs> veteran. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Service. <laughs> They're a tough act to follow, but I'll, very briefly, uh, Molly and Ethan both alluded to the fact they'll be doing extensive renovations to the building, mm -hmm. both in the interior and the exterior. I, I know you need to have copies of the yes. plans. Uh, so they're investing you know, quite a bit of money into this project, particularly for something that they don't own. Uh, and so I think I think what they'll be doing will be an improvement, not only to the property itself, but, but to the surrounding properties, because they'll be taking a, a building, I'm sure you all know, that's uh, a little bit run down at the moment, uh, if I may say. And so with their investment in, in the property, I think it's going to be quite an improvement, uh, not only to that building, but as I said, to the, to, uh, the neighborhood in general. I know you have um, copies of the letters. They, they got several letters of support. Mm -hmm. Uh, from folks, uh, many of whom are here tonight, uh, to, to 
voice their support. So with that, Mr. Chairman, um, unless the uh, members have any more questions of, of me, uh, I'll sit down and you can ask uh, for the other folks. Uh, I just have one going. Oh, the lease. Yes. How long is the lease for? Uh, five year term. And uh, uh, I just wanted to see how they will protect the investment and all yep. that money. Yeah. There's, there's an element of risk associated with Dubai, right? Right. Thank you, Council. Okay, thank you. Is there any uh, council? You want to speak first? Or you want to? Yeah, sure. Uh, David McCarthy, 148 Whitney Road, Dog Kennel. Um, Ethan and I have had various conversations over the past several months. Um, the first one is when they said they're at 45 Stoughton and they had over 100 clients. And I know when his, uh, Molly was talking about being mobile, they do a lot of picking up and, and taking care of the dogs so that they're out and about a little bit. But um, Having over 100 clients down Howe's Neck on 45 Stoughton and getting no complaints was impressive to me yeah. <laughs> because uh, yeah. that I usually get a phone call and uh, not one. Um, I know there's a lot of people here that um, have emailed me and people that are here this evening um, that are in need of this. Um, I can't think of another one. Maybe there's another place, a kennel in Quincy, but a dog grooming, uh, and, you know. Yeah, I don't, you know, maybe one or two or whatever, but uh, down in that area, um, I think it's um, it, it'll be a good a good deal for everybody. A lot of folks that have dogs down in that area, when I mentioned what was going into Harry's, they had no idea and they were excited because they were going to utilize um, Ethan and Molly a little bit here. Mm -hmm. The release issue, as I think would be the number one priority, um, is something that possibly we can build in a little bit and I know Robin is his crew and special services maybe can do some spot checks yep. but as I said before on, the, on 45 Stoughton and, and uh, the whole deal with the dogs down down in the neck and in the area um, no calls a pretty stealth operation mm -hmm. that um, uh, I think that they have a handle on so uh, but I'd, I'd love to see inspectional services just Put it on the uh, yeah, check it list or the radar a little bit. Um, I know that I got one call from a neighbor a couple of houses over. Uh, they had concerns about the noise, mm -hmm. and um, we totally understand it. And I think we'll we'll find out. We'll keep an eye on it and uh, get our arms around it if it's an issue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Is there anyone that wants to speak in favor? If you guys don't mind, just line up here. And, yeah. You know. Stage support. Name, address. Name, address. I'm in support. We're all set. I was just a screw bit, so. Why? You're a cat guy. You're a cat guy. Hi, my name is Teresa Devona. I'm at 20 Jewett Street, Quincy. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf um, of a public hearing. I was not given the same opportunity, but for them, I am very excited to hear that there's going to be a business, um, a dog business in our area. We need more businesses. Yeah, we and I'm really excited for that. Um, so I give them our support. I'm, I'm glad it's not condos or apartments or anything like that. Um, so I wish you guys really good luck, and I'm really glad that you're going to be in the area as a business. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm Dave Devona from Twin Jewett Street. Um, also for all this business, I'm also self-employed, so trust me, I get what it takes to try to make something work put your neck out there. So again, I just wanted to support these two for taking the dive into it. It's not a, it's a major entity. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is also David Long, but I do it by by Janice Street. And I am definitely in favor of this. And the reason why I am in favor of this is because we'll have no adverse reaction in the area as far as parking and anything else to the neighbors in the area. Also, which uh, I believe everybody here is aware, they're right behind the main sewer line that's coming down here from Fangenham. And they will definitely, definitely not have any adverse conditions 
to add any more problems with our main sewer line. I am definitely in favor of this. Thank, Thank you. you all. Amy Oppenheim, one Richards River Convener. Um, I am very in favor. I've been sending my dog to Seaside Canine for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. They are extremely reliable and trustworthy, and that is really hard to find someone to trust with basically yeah. your baby. So, very, very in favor. Thank you. My name is Andrew Nazaro. I live on 171 Badcock Street. Uh, I've been a client for the last two years. Ethan and Molly do a great job with all the dogs. They really help my dog with some behavioral issues um, and kind of work through, you know, socializing her with other dogs. So I can't thank them enough for taking her while I'm at work and my wife's at work. Um, and it'd just be a great, great opportunity for the neighborhood. Thank, thank you. How you doing? Nate Marcheski, 162 Colonial Drive. Uh, my wife and I have been taking our dogs to Molly and Ethan for the last two and a half, three years. Um, just can't say enough good things about them. They're great. The dogs are well looked after. Trust them completely. They love going over there. Uh, to speak on kind of what Ethan had said about, you know, different hours and stuff. I'm a lineman for National Grid in Quincy, so I work some pretty wild hours sometimes. And to have these guys to look after the dogs and I know they're taken care of is just, just huge, really. And I can't say enough good things about them and uh, fully support their uh, request for the special permit. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Hi, Randy Hoos, 50 Russell Park, Quincy. Uh, we've been using the service for over a year, and uh, we just find them very uh, responsible and, and uh, great to work with. So we hope it becomes a business and continues to have success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi there, Kaylee McKeon, 132 Rockland Street. Um, we've been sending our dog to Molly and Ethan for the past three years. Um, everyone kind of covered it. They are absolutely the best. It's very hard to find trust within someone with your pet. Um, and they're always there for everyone. Sometimes I think my dog's not going to come home because they like them more than they like their own damn owners. But they really are the best people, and I could not be any more in favor for this. Thank you. Ralph Fisher, 981 C Street. Um, my wife and I, we've been uh, taking Blaze to uh, from Ethan and Molly's so I don't, at least three years now, I mean, as soon as I found out. They are extremely good with, 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 with dogs. I mean, talk, uh, the, one of the things I kept hearing about was the noise issue. One of the things you, you learn is the fact that when dogs are in a nice, social, and comfortable environment, they're not noisy. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear dogs barking when people walk by with their dogs or something like that. Yeah, there's that barrier of frustration. When you have dogs are social creatures and they like each other's company and therefore they're generally very quiet. You rarely ever get a lot of noise out. And the fact that they have an overnight system uh, business is a godsend. I mean, what, you know, not too long ago we took a trip to uh, to Scotland and it was about two weeks and they had Blaze there for two weeks and not a problem. He loves them, he loves their friend, he loves the friends that he gets to play with. They are absolutely, I, I can't recommend them more highly. Uh, they're just amazing folks. And I hope, oh, and another good thing, it's nice to have a business there. Last thing Quincy needs is another empty storefront. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Hi everyone, I'm Catherine Cox, I live at 9 Grant Place in Dorchester. Um, just wanted to echo everything everyone said. Um, my rescue was beaten and left in a park. Um, and just to talk to their behavior help, um, he'll tear up. They are, he is obsessed with Ethan and Molly. Um, they're such amazing people. Um, I don't have a huge support system, and they're always there to help. Um, and I drive over into the Ponset Bridge from Dorchester in rush hour traffic twice a week um, because I love them so much. So, so Thank, proud you, of them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Tom Bell, 20 Yard Drive in Milton. Not a Quincy resident, but like people from Dorchester, people from Milton coming to have our dogs come see Molly and Ethan. It's just a testament to what they're, the kind of people they are. And, and a veteran and a Boston public school teacher, they are 
I swear to God, they're the salt of the earth here too. And um, my dog is I'm jealous of them because my dog is in love with them. And doesn't want to come home with them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You guys filming hey. a commercial? Talking about, <laughs> <laughs> talking about, yeah, it's 830 in Tiffany Hall, and you're all here in line. This is a couple. It says enough for itself. Yeah. Get it uh, David Jacobs, 10 Charles Street. Don't know Molly Nathan, but um, I know people who use them, and uh, I have an elder dog, senior dog, so hopefully I'll be using it now too. But excited to see a business. I know you're passionate about business. Mm -hmm. Down in Ward 1, everyone here has been good about that, so just glad that this can stay a business. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Hi, Mr. Dunn. You're in favor. Of course I'm in favor. have got a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> the to open a business, see sure. an empty storefront open in this, and they're at uh, Stoughton Street. I live at Bad Clock Street. I didn't even know there were dogs down there. <laughs> so they must run a good business. And if they could give me some lessons, that's why the dogs. The dog might kiss you. How many people are going to vote for that? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Good morning. Hi, I'm Liz Henry, uh, 180 Elmore Road in Braintree. Uh, we, uh, my husband and I, Mary, have been using Molly Nathan services for the past three ish years, I think. And to echo everyone else's sentiments, they really are salt of the earth. We, would do, I, we personally would do anything for them. I think this showing of people here tonight is a, a true testament to how wonderful people that they really are, but um, dogs especially enjoy going to their house. Um, we have a vibrant uh, social media presence that um, all the dog owners love seeing, um, and I just can't say enough great things about them. Um, especially my, my husband and I do travel frequently um, and for those people who don't have kids and would consider their pet to be their child, um, having somebody dependable that you can leave your pet with um, is really worth all the money in the world. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Hi, I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so happy for the both of you. My dog, two, two, name, one, three, name oh, sorry, Julie Gibbons, 27 Babcock Street. Um, fortunately, we're neighbors and they have a dog business and my dog is suffering from trauma and abuse um, and he was a project and Molly Ethan drastically helped me with that. Um, I traveled for a year straight for work and without them I wouldn't have been able to proceed in my career um, because he would stay with them for months at a time um, and they, he's really come a long way. Um, we've been, my dog's been going to them for five years, a little over five years, so um, I think they'll be an asset to the community. Being their neighbor, same thing, the noise with the dogs, you never hear them. You can hear kids playing ball in yeah. Lebrecht Park, but you can't hear the dogs ever. Um, my sister also buds them, um, and there's never been a Because how how's that kids a lot of them? They are. <laughs> um, but there's never been any noise complaints or traffic or, or, or any issues. Um, I think they'd be a great asset to the community. Um, they already are, and um, I don't know. I'm all for them. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming here. Wait. I'm back. So this is much better because I can tell you've already had, you could actually get a dog because they can help socialize and maybe even give you a couple of tips on how to drive out. You just got to take away his license. <laughs> but then actually I'm very in support of this as a dog owner and knowing how hard it is. Um, with COVID a lot of people bought dogs and they didn't have any place to bring them to when they went back to work. No different than childcare. It's very difficult for people to be able to make sure their dog can be socialized and it's extremely hard when you actually go away because you do want to leave those animals with somebody that can be cared for. And what better situation to have than to have Harry's become a dog. You know, it, it is, and I, I'm so glad I won't be up here to actually- 27 for, units. For, 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 for 27 years. So this is, I welcome you to the community. I know it's very emotional and I do really do appreciate um, you coming and, and, and expanding and putting an investment into- Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope it's
Actually, the other two dogs, their moms and dads, mine's them in the middle, in the back seat. And Balky is actually driving. I <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to share how special they send out pictures and they actually do calendars as well too to support the um, animal, the Quincy Animal Shelter. So they don't allow the dogs to really drive, but I figured I should. <laughs> um, but my name is Kim Lindgren. I live at 481 C Street. And when I came to Quincy, I bought my home in, I think, eight years ago. And it was a joy to find them. Um, when I had purchased my new dog, she was a um, rescue dog. And they are a joy. And just like the other parents all said, my dog thinks she is gifted because she has two homes. She gets to go back and forth between each one, but they, they're absolutely wonderful uh, to promote Quincy business and also, like I said, supporting the Quincy Animal Shelter. They also you know, do calendars with all the dogs in them. Uh, Dee Dee will start worrying. She's always in the pink month, so um, I am totally 100 percent in favor of them uh, taking over that location, just a short distance from me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your time. It's a tribute to these two. Uh, that's, you know, I mean, 9 o'clock before you get out of here, and, and uh, we all came here and spent the time with, with, for the people that are taking care of your family. I think I want to say my kids name. <laughs> <laughs> Reform, all I hear is, you know, like a year old, like a lot of I know. I'm learning so much about dogs. Don't get another one. <laughs> no, I'm not. Right. Okay, I haven't had an animal since that. Uh, and then something happened. A friend of mine bought me a cat. I said, I think you need a cat. I need a cat. Because I want a cat. Because I need a cat. It's going to be a cat. It's, cat. it's Mae Coon. She goes, it's going to be six feet long. I go, like, what? She goes, yeah, he's, he's, he's like he's eight months old and he's three and a half feet and I'm looking at him going like, hey, he's like a dog. And he's, his gross birth, they told me, is between three and four. And I go, what? Like at three years old, he'll be that big and he gets a gross bird? Like, he's going to be calling me. I can't. I thought I was getting a little cute. Anyway. Uh, it's a testament. Really, both of them. And, uh, I'm impressed. It takes a lot to impress me up here because I hear it all the time, but these people really went out of their way. You must be doing something really super focused. focused. Uh, I don't even want to ask if anyone's against this because they might not get out. I want to see your favorite. Might not get out. Keep going. Let me speak one time. I got to get on the record. I come to these meetings all the time, and I have never seen so many people come out in right. support of something. It's the most people. So we are <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of the times you feel bad coming to these meetings. You guys must feel bad being on the board sometimes on some of these decisions, but this makes you feel good about being a resident of the yeah. city of Point. So, um, you know, I want to thank everyone for coming, and I also want to just recommend to the board that if you know so many people are in favor of something, move this agenda to the first item. That we didn't know, John. John, <laughs> I really thought in my... I didn't know what was going on either. I thought half these people probably don't like these things. They don't want a dog... Well, I mean, we've seen many things. It seems so like... I said, let it play out. 
people like dogs better than the children, because we've seen... <laughs> no, no, the only other time, there's a lot of adult daycare centers, or there's um, the child and, and people that have their kids at the daycare center. And I don't even have a dog, I have cats, but if I had a dog, I would love to burn to you guys, so... I don't even think they should get a property tax <laughs> today. <laughs> sorry, 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 Close your other side. But I'm in favor. All right. Read those in first. We'll call. Last call. Call that part of the hearing closed. No, there's a DPD, DPW one. Where is it? Wow. Uh, no. Ah, another thing. We reviewed the project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed to this side? First call. Oh. Second call. Oh. Third call. Oh. <laughs> Council. Come on. This guy here. Yeah. <laughs> Four, right? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all say anything else? I, I know you want to wrap it up. No, no it's great. Uh, getting late. I think a lot of the uh, a lot of those in favor. They yeah, said yeah, that yeah. that was probably no, okay. So we'll go we'll go through it and just know. I don't even want to say it, but I have to. There's one one proposition letter here. Three, four, four, four. Susan Dyer, 421 C Street, Quincy. Strongly opposed. Um, Main concerns are noise, always are operated yeah. negative to the resale of property and my value. That dog daycare residence overnight accommodation will inevitably generate a significant amount of noise and parking. Uh, furthermore, I'm concerned the present uh, will negatively impact the sale or resale of my property value. Yeah. Yeah. Call that part of hearing closed. Last call, you may even last call opposed. No? Okay. Call that closed. Any motion, please? Mr. Chairman, CBA 23-20, Barry Crimmins for a special permit to operate a dog daycare with the option for yep. overnight accommodations on the premise from the 405 C Street Twin. They make a motion to grant the special permit. Yeah. Second. Second. Enthusiastically. <laughs> <laughs> well, the motion, seeing it, all in favor? Aye. 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 Again, aye. 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 I'll see us when you need the bigger building in three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman, members of the board, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We'll give, <laughs> no. we'll give me a minute to clear out. You almost said, Council? Mm -hmm. Wait anxiously? You gotta eat like billable hours, though. <laughs> 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 Uh, Mr. Spear Platt LLC and McDermott. 
Uh, he's the manager of Spare Flats, and he's here this evening as, as well. Uh, Jim Burke is our engineer from the Silver Solid of Quincy. Alita Elba, Chu and Company Architects of Quincy. Um, so 59 Spare Street. Uh, my client is proposing a doggy daycare. Yay! Uh, I wish that couple the best of luck. It's great to see that support. It's, uh, I, love, I love that level of support. That's, that's great. That's <laughs> so 59 Spear Street uh, consists of uh, a lot size of 7,736 square feet, roughly, um, in a business C zoning district. It's currently improved by a two-family residence. Um, this is, like you all know Spear Street, this is located on a block that has really received a lot of attention over the, over the last few years uh, because of its proximity to downtown, obviously, uh, and, and public <coughs> as well. Uh, this board has seen some other proposals at this particular property as well. Uh, larger, as far as number of units uh, were proposed and what Ann is proposing here. Um, so the proposal uh, before this board this evening uh, which is designed by Chu and Company Architects of Quincy is to demolish the existing two-family residence and construct one four-story building containing six residential flats. So two units on, on each of those floors. Um, this proposal will accommodate parking under the building um, for 10, 10 parking spaces, which is what is required um, in business for, for the residential use. Uh, these residential units will consist of all two bedrooms, uh, again, two units on each floor. Um, and I will point out um, the existing two family now sits uh, pretty well to one side of the property, leaving a five foot setback right now. This new proposed building will be centered. Uh, we're going to provide uh, you know, 10, um, 10 foot setback. Um, on one side and the front as well, as well as uh, 12 feet behind. Uh, a little bit shy on, on one side, and that particular side of the property uh, on the other side is adjacent to the Bank of Canton parking lot. You know, so I think this was designed in a way. Uh, Ann knows Spear Street really well. He's owned this property for a while. Uh, he knows the difficulties on Spear Street. So again, as I've told this board before with projects and people that I represent, we, we always like to approach this by first assessing the neighborhood, you know, can the street, you know, support parking at all? You know, um, here, you know, we, we did not think so, you know, so that was so important to us to approach this, providing that necessary parking uh, for these six units. Um, it, there's a real mixed match of, of properties on Spear Street. Uh, there had been, there may still be rooming houses. Uh, there's three families, two families, um, four families as well. Uh, there's a 20 unit apartment building next door. Many of these properties uh, can't, support, can't support a great deal of parking you know, for their individual uses, so that's part of the problem. You know? So we looked at that too, and we want to provide parking for our proposal there, which we've done. Uh, for instance, the parking, the building next door is a 20 unit apartment building built you know, many years ago, and I, and I understand, with no parking. You know? So obviously that's, that's a concern there. Um, Again, the team is here, so I'm going to have uh, uh, Jim Burke, uh, who is our engineer. Um, it's important for me to point out, and sometimes I belabor this a little bit, but it's important for, the, for this board to know that because of, of this project being the six units, we were, we have been before the planning board for site plan review. This board entirely knows that's a very, very thorough review process. There was a peer review consultant that was hired, obviously all the city departments. Uh, Ali Rule is our, is our city traffic engineer. She looked at these things. Uh, we be began this uh, with a proposed seven unit. Uh, we had 12 parking spaces underneath as well. Um, Ms. Rule really didn't care for two of the spaces. Um, and we listened. We listened to the neighbors. We listened to um, uh, Ward Councilor uh, McCarthy as well. Uh, and we did, you know, we did drop that one unit down to six. Uh, fits even better. Uh, we opened up the parking a little bit better. Um, for site circulation and things of that nature, and we still provide the, the 10 spaces. Uh, Dave has been great. We did have a neighborhood meeting uh, some time ago uh, because uh, site plan review uh, went on for a few months as well. Uh, very little attendance you know, at the neighborhood meeting, unfortunately. I always like to have many as, as many people, yeah. you know, so it was at the, at the school, uh, excuse me, at the planning uh, building. Um, there were maybe 
a half a dozen people that were there. You know, we tried to you know answer, understand their concerns and answer what we could uh, at that time. Um, so we received site plan approval from this planning board for the city of Quincy, and uh, obviously this is our next step here. Uh, so without further ado, I'm, uh, I'm going to have Jim Burke uh, just give a quick presentation as well, and Lee Valvo can give a little bit on the aftermath. We're about to start it in the shed. <laughs> yeah, so we were, I, my office was notified from the Quincy Police Department, you know, and, uh, and Ann has, has really sealed that up. Uh, he, there's nobody in the home. It was, just, it was in that shed. Yeah, that's been sealed up. Um, when? Yesterday? Just des desperate people. That was today. today. Uh, it was today. <laughs> was today. Uh, we, yeah, we were I was just notified recently by, by a, uh, an officer of the Police Department. They even had shelves and it set up a little bit. Like it's a little kitchen area. Right, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, bags. Bags. So, so that's, that's been taken care of. Thank you. Uh, but uh, let me have Jim Burke give a, a quick presentation. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, my name is Jim Burke uh, with the uh, Selberg Salad office here in Quincy. And uh, we've been working on this job for uh, quite a while. We, we've actually did the original design um, back in, I think, 2018 or so. Uh, but uh, what you have is a single, single building with 10 parking spaces underneath. Um, we, did listen to the neighbors with regards to had a concern with a retaining wall, which we uh, uh, created to get rid of that. Uh, we did go back and forth quite a bit with uh, uh, the peer review, and uh, we've got a final letter from them saying that everything is uh, uh, pretty good. We've got, um, as far as water supply goes, we've got a, a configuration that is preferred by uh, Quincy Engineering, which is a, a six inch main reduced down to a four for fire and then tapped off with a two inch for domestic service. Um, gravity sore uh, coming off uh, and connecting to utilities in, in the street. Uh, the drainage is, uh, is incredibly robust. One of the comments we got back from peer review is that they wanted to do some uh, water quality. Uh, so we've got a, water a proprietary water quality collection system. Uh, it's mostly for, you know, it's a, it's a covered uh, parking lot. Uh, and it also goes into a, a, a fairly large detention structure. Uh, Four by four by four concrete honeycomb Legion Valley. I'm sure you've seen them uh, hang on the edges of the road, but uh, in the three by ten configuration represented by that kind of dashed out square in the center of the building. Um, soils out there are uh, sand and gravels. We did some actual soil testing on there, that, and that soil information is on the plans and was reviewed by the review as well. We had to, and uh, you know, it was difficult. To, it was a difficult configuration. Uh, they all two bedroom units. Yeah. They're all two bedroom units. Yeah. yeah. All two two bedroom units. Yes. That's Any good. questions? I mean. Right. Yeah, this isn't the special permit. Spear Street is one 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 point five. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But they're not part of the special permit. They, like Spear Street isn't there. Is it right on the edge? Yeah. I just can't answer your question. Yeah. So yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna answer after they had yeah. presented. So obviously we're here for a reason, you know. That yeah. Hands on one. Street or something. So business C uh, does allow for residential use, uh, but we're here requesting a special permit yeah, uh, yeah, right. in a business C district for that residential. use. Okay. You know, uh, variances requests are very minimal. Okay. You know, just set front, front and and, and so one of the side setbacks, um, but front is only really a half a foot. Yeah, you yeah. know, the other is five feet. You know, so but very they, minimal. They, but um, spears, so where, where's the downtown redevelopment? Is it cut off a lot? Yes. Yeah, must, um, must cut off a lot. I don't know exactly where that line yeah, is, is uh, but but pretty yeah pretty close. It's right there. Yeah. It is right there. Yeah. You know it is it is downtown. It should have made a lot of distance. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, I wish they had zoned it a little differently. But but again, this this site is only so big as well. You know it can only support so yeah. much. You feel what what's proposed here is very reasonable. Again, minimal uh, variance is request here. Special permit for the residential use. Finding because this is technically a, an expansion of a, of a non-conforming uh, building. You know because of setbacks and things. So I request the binding. You know, as well. And I think the 
finding is, is a little easier because it's, it's not certain, certainly not substantially more detrimental. You know, we're providing parking, which we're improving, as Jim indicated, the stormwater management. You know, uh, from from the uh, for the site as well, uh, and then providing um, much needed uh, much needed housing, uh, which I think you can all attest to. I know there's a lot, you know, but there's 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 residential housing needed, you know, uh, in, in every yeah, municipality. Like, you know, Nine thousand on books. Oh, what's the number of units? 40,000 residents down in, in, in the city of Boston and 30,000 up in the city. Yeah. You just keep stealing. No, but it's, it's like, you know, it's like 9,000 units. I got you. I got you. I got you. Like, 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 no, no I, I, don't, I don't think for traffic purposes there's much use. People that live there could probably the consider it. Well, no, it, it may be. In, in some right. respect, uh, no, it really is. I think you know, new, you go. new, new coming off, coming off the other street that's right there. Right turn all the way to the other street. But it says if you look at it, it says you can turn left. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 Yeah, I really, I okay. really do. Okay. Because I'm still looking for two spaces. This is uh, Alita Alba um, from Chu. Name and address for the record, please. Alita Alba, Chu Company, one building south of Wendy. Why don't you tell us what the building is made of? So, this proposed project consists of six residential units with 10 parking spaces underneath. Here we have a driveway and we have parking spaces on uh, both sides of the property and uh, on its own we have a lobby with the egress there and then uh, the second means of egress in the back and we also have a um, wheelchair lead to make the first floor unit accessible. Mm -hmm. So this is like a bird's eye view from above. Um, that's the building footprint above. What is up top? So this is a mess start on the top with architecture shingles, and then we have dormers. Uh, the siding on the main, um, the other two floors is fiber cement lap siding, four inch reveal. And here is obviously the parking underneath the building. Thank you. 
from all five brethren of the building. Any questions? Yeah, uh, no, not about the building. I just had a question about the, the uh, parking space. How were you assigned on any parking space? Since you did sign it, correct? Yes, uh, so there's, there's going to, obviously the condominium docks will, will really control that. You know? I don't, that's a bad answer. If you buy a unit, you don't get an automatic one space, and then the rest might be bidden, I don't know, but you mean to tell me you buy a unit there, you don't get a space? You would get a, you would get a deeded space if you, if you want it. Is if it extra? Want it, if you want it. Is it extra? Uh, uh, I don't think we've gotten into that great detail if it is extra. I uh, want a lot of, a lot of I go, space. Because would. if someone's going to sell a condo and then you're going to start selling parking space. Yeah, likely, 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 it's just, it's just, likely, it's just me. Not. I'm letting you know. You, just, no, you don't have to finish for me. I can finish myself. I swear I can come. So if, if, if you can't give me an answer, I won't be both in favor. There'll be one needed space per, per unit. unit. Yes. And then yes. that's automatic goes with the price. That's right. Oh. You're saying that's done? Yeah. Okay. Because I know what happened in a few places around here and bothered me. That there was like 18 spaces, so many units, and then all of a sudden they need to buy the space for three grand a year. Like, what else are you talking about? This is bizarre. Right. They own part of this building. So, and it wasn't good. This happened a couple of times. No, and, I've, and I've done some projects where uh, the mixed use component uh, adds another, another layer. You know, exactly. And for those particular projects, to really get a full, you need a real full uh, parking management plan, you know, to control that. So I have that. Okay, hey, but, but before this we morning. should know Here, before we go vote on anything whether you buy a condo or you don't even get a parking space. You get oh, you, you, you you would get a space, correct? Yes. Right. Yep. Uh, that, I mean, that, that's that's a no brainer. That, that has no, to be. Really that has to be. It happened. It already happened a couple times in the city. Yep. No, that has that has to be the case where the you know. Uh, one, one per unit. Um, uh, I split up a half. You know. And then, you know, if some, if a, if a unit wanted, a, if someone purchasing a unit wanted a second space, oh, of course. then you might, you know, charge for, for the second space. Yes. Yeah. Right. Was there any questions? I have one right now. Um, the garage, will it be covered with the door or will it just be open? It's going to be open so people can walk in. Um, I guess the planning board did not suggest having a garage door. Sometimes they don't like that because it creates like traffic coming in. Like people have to wait here for the garage door. In another project, they didn't like that, so and they didn't request the door. Yeah. Who, who did they? Who has to wait for the garage door? Well, they were concerned that if there's Waiting like the people street. driving yeah. in, that it's gonna wait here for the garage oh, door and they stop there. In the traffic the coming in yeah. on the street, then uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, it was never brought up uh, to have that. Uh, on the side of each, um, it, again, it's open, um, but we, we took into consideration um, the Campbell's building next door, the apartment building. You know, so we tried to provide as much landscape, and that's why we have the 10 foot setback on that side to provide as much landscape between those two properties as much as we could. They actually did request we make the driveway 22 feet wide because we have a 20 feet wide driveway. Yeah. So we have 20, 22 feet wide, yeah. yeah. As an architect, just want your opinion, do you think the building would look better with a garage door or without? <laughs> um, well, if you have a garage door, then you kind of have to enclose it because then it looks like kind of weird to have the door and all open on both sides. It's like kind of out of place, I think. Well, I guess I'm looking at the wrong <laughs> elevation. I'm just looking at this. <laughs> From the deck? Because okay. both sides are open. They do that in your house. They do that everywhere. It doesn't matter. <laughs> For security purposes <laughs> and keeping uh, trespassers out of the building. It's going to have to be some uh, management on the site. Not on site with six units. All right. You know, obviously, uh, <coughs> but with the kind of idioms comes trustees. You know, unit owners will be the trustees. So you know, some rely on cameras, I guess. So, yeah. I'm sure, like anywhere, there's, there's some surveillance as well. Yeah, sure. I, I just think that covered parking looks better than open floor. I agree. Floor. But <laughs> if it's all enclosed, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.
And your question on, on additional spaces. So that's the only thing the traffic engineer really brought up uh, with respect. There's more, there's more site circulation. You know, it wasn't a, 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 an issue with parking and concern with parking and for that number of units, it was more site circulation. Uh, so it was actually these, so these two spaces here, which is in the back uh, of the site, uh, those, those they wanted us to get. Done. So that's when we came down to the number of you units as well at the same time to be able to accommodate the 10 spaces. You, know, we, you, know, you, you don't even have an extra space for guests. You know? uh, well, we do. <laughs> well, based on, well, based on the one and a half, that's, that's nine spaces for six units. Depends how much, yeah, yeah. yeah. in the bottom one. Yeah. No one's going to buy them unless they need them, so. Uh, but, you know, with respect to the other dimensional requirements, you know, it's 500 square feet per unit, you know, for. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, I think plus. zoning doesn't change. I mean, if we're going to build these buildings, we, we have to have two cars per unit. If we don't, we should be building That's just my opinion. I, I understand. It's just, you got to get cars off the street. And I, and I know there's people here that say, don't, don't, let them park on the street. Are you kidding me? And, and no experience street, that's go? that's what we've done. You know, that's how that's we that's how we that's how we approach it. You know, yeah. Right. Any other questions? Still right? Good. I'll second. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone that wants to speak in council? You want to say something? Well, I want to say go to what okay. the neighbors uh, want to talk. Okay. Uh, does anyone want to speak in favor? First call. Second call. Mr. Dunn. What address I'm coming to. Uh, 122 May at Thomas J. McGrath Highway. I'll actually be in the butter of this project. I'm an equity owner in 122 May at McGrath. I support this. I know there's been other proposals brought before the board for this particular property. I think it was a halfway house or something. But this gets a blighted piece of property cleaned up. I understand Marty's concerns about parking. It's a one way, it's it's two way up into the bank parking lot, an entrance to a one way. Mm -hmm. uh, since the city implemented that, there's been a great slowdown in traffic on that street. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it'd be a great improvement. And uh, mm -hmm. I wish the developer good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else want to speak in favor? Second call, third call, all the five hearing close. We're going to hear from the EPW. We have, we have reviewed, uh, we have reviewed that and provided comments for this project to the planning board. All the comments provided have been addressed. We do not have any more at this time. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? First call, second call. Come up, name and address for the record. Stan Campbell. Um, I own the building uh, right next door. Okay. B through 57 Spear Street. Mm -hmm. um, this lot here, um, I, I'm all for developing it. Um, it's been an eyesore, and the halfway house wasn't the greatest thing either. Um, but the, they, they, these folks keep saying that they have parking under the building. They don't have parking under the building. The reason that they have parking is because they push their parking right up on top of my lot line. And they're allowed to do that, okay? They, they, have, they have building setback. Building setback, but well, well, that height building is supposed to be 10 feet. They just violated the five feet. Why? All they, they have a choice. They can drop the building lower, and then they can go up the five feet. They can go out all the way around. But no, they want to keep a high building, and they want to push out. They don't meet their setbacks at all. They, if you keep, make them go inside. That's the, why they're here. Right. And so that's why I'm here. Right. So if, right. You, if you push them back to what they're supposed to have mm -hmm. uh, on the parking setbacks, then they only get eight cars there. Whether it's eight cars or not, it's a five unit. I'm not really complaining about the five or six. I'm complaining about them being allowed to park their cars, headlights right up in, you know, facing my building a few feet away. Um, the uh, Spear Street has 12 uh, parking spaces on the whole street. Um, I have, my building has no, no parking at all. My building is right on its lot line. That was, if you say that was a precedence, maybe it was a precedence, but that building was built and none of us were alive, yeah. and there were no cars. So 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe they, we can by now figure that the, the hostess bunny might be around for a while. So um, the, um, I think it's it, it's ridiculous how how congested that street is. Um, and I wish I get parking. I wish I could get parking from my park. Um, I mean, I'm going to ask them. I mean, if there's any lights shining in the building, it has to. They have to put some protection up there so it don't happen. There's a fence on that side. How high? Uh, probably a six foot fence. Uh, and I might need eight. I don't know because it's you know we still get that reflection off. Of it. You know, absolutely took that into consideration as well. Knowing cars that we pulled into those particular spaces mm -hmm. right, right at this point. So it's a six foot fence you're gonna you're gonna put it in now. Yep. Right. Um, and and I and I don't understand at all that how the justification is because it, the property on the other side is owned by a bank parking lot currently. We should be able to do five feet. Why 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 is five feet? Just go go to ten feet. And then you can build one drop lower, build me five then. Um, the you no know, it's unfair to whether it's the bank property or my property, when you violate the setbacks, you take away from my value. You take away from their value. I mean, I always want to be a bank. But they're trying to increase the value of your very part. I know what you're saying. Exactly. I know what you're saying. Uh, what about this? Huh? What about the funds end up for the parking? Anyway, so it's so going up to a parking lot. Right. They're going to get I mean, a parking lot. That's what I'm saying. They like went out about closer to that side. It is. I mean, even more. I mean, oh, wow. that don't bother me. It's only four feet. Five feet. Five feet. Four, 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 four feet. Yeah, four feet. feet. Cut it in half. I mean, like. Right. So move the building you're saying towards that. I don't know. I, mean, I, mean, I thought it was on that side. It is, but I mean. So five feet, feet on that side, right? So yeah, five feet, five feet the on the back side. On the back side. Ten feet on the other, correct? Uh, a little under ten feet. But again, it's ten point six is required. And we're at 10. Oh, okay. you're not at 10. Actually, if you look at the plan, you're at 10. Well, then the survey is lying. Okay, so the it's, survey it's is lying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. No, it's just, come on, we can't do that. Guys. It's yeah. too late. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the site plan. If you look at the plan, then you can get this setback on the back of their lot as 9 foot 8. So, so I don't know when it's getting 10. 10. I guess it's about enough. I thought I'm sorry. Well, that's the public field, I guess. We have right. 10 feet here. And Right, so he's short, short on the back. That's what I'm looking at. It's, it's, it comes back like a yeah. 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 My question is, you're talking about the, my side of the building. So I've got these, they're protruding out. From, the building is here. The cars are sticking out. They don't have the setback. And we're worried about the setback, the lights being on top of our building and shining in. That, okay, that's fine. But you know what? Now, now you're talking Come on, about the setback. space is correct. Yes. Yeah. They're in their parking spaces. They're not sticking out. This took out from the building. No. You say, oh, you say, oh. She's talking about, like, you know how like, the building above is here. Yeah. And the parking is two feet more. But, but you have an 18-foot eight, an space. It's in yes. a space. Right. right. What kind of fence is a six-foot fence? We could do eight. We're going to do um, some other fence. Eight-foot fence. Right. So, first of all, you're really close to my building, and with that car sticking out there, now you're going to put a six foot solid white fence that's going to be all along my lot line, and it's going to look like hell. Well, then, if I just may, the parking lot itself is about two, two and a half feet below the ground next to your property. So, parking, you know, your headlights are typically two, two and a half feet off the ground. Um, with the fence and, and the landscaping on that edge, I mean, the parking, the headlights are going to be pretty low. And you got a six foot fence on that side? You only need four. Huh? You only need four, really. But I asked you a question. In there, six are you happy? You got a six foot fence. Yeah. Right. 
So would you like to be looking or walking past your house and have next to that wall by the I don't think so. So what do you want? Nothing? Well, no. trees? Give us give us a clue what you're looking for. I don't know what you're okay, looking what for. Okay, what about trees? Like out of the body Let's look at the landscape plan. Let's look at that. There's one, two, three, you got what, six, six trees there? Well, that's on, yeah, that's on that yeah. side. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's without, but if, but if you put a fence in, that's not going to, I mean, yeah, well, you could still put a fence in. Why don't you look at the fence? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you could be, you could be versus with the fence and then on your side put, put uh, the trees. 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 Yeah, yeah, so do the fence at the end of the driveway. Right. Uh, at the end of the, well, right there. Well, can you look at a picture here of my building right next to their building and see what this fence looks like? I haven't seen that. No, it could be inside the trees. Where, where it's saying. Yes. Yes, it's my building. And put, it, so, put the, put yeah, the yeah, fence the inside the tree. The so put the fence on the inside yeah, of the yeah, tree. Right? We could do that, yeah. We could do that. I mean, the fence could go on the inside of the trees. And you're looking at all the trees. So on your side of the and, and, and it's gonna hide most of the fence. And it's two feet low. Yeah. Wouldn't that be better? You do that. Would that be better? Yes. All right, we can do that. But we'll make that um, make the note of it. The fence right. goes on the inside of the tree. It's still hot that away from my property. It's fast to get out that all right, come in. Let's, I don't know let's, I don't know everyone hold up here, hold up here. Ask us a question, we'll get no, to the answer. Oh, 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 I didn't see it. I, I didn't know. I thought it was fucking her. I'm going the no, other no. check for that. No one can hear what's going on here. So it's just shy, so it needs to be 10 foot 6. It's just shy. Right. The thing is, it's just really up in, up in our face. And I don't know why it's being allowed to be. But besides that, the parking, it's not enough. It's like we've planned this out. We've I believe it. that too, but the but the rules are you know, nine I'm spaces and you've given ten. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it is. I think we should have a minimum of two spaces per per unit. It's but right that now. ain't the rule. So okay. if so I got something to do with help change the rules, whole, I'm gonna do that. The whole perimeter going around from like McGrath to Newfield. Yeah. Yeah. I forget that there's no parking when I get that. The only parking in that whole block is Spear Street. And you can't park down by um, the other buildings and you can't What's park the all the way up. Down? You can't park all the way up by the, no, the church. No, the between Spear so and what the, you can the do, YMCA. I, I park on the side over there once. So it, what you can do is come down, down Spear Street. Francis, you yeah. have exactly, Francis, uh, Francis, that's Francis, thank you. There's exactly 12 spots. On Francis? No, on no, 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 on no, I, it's My brother time. owns a house on, 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 and I park in front of his house. It's a window. Yeah. And you park no, no, his sidewalk in his pocket. Well, you know? so you don't get chicken. No, but he's inside. He's yeah. inside with his cars are off the street. He's got two, two driveways. He's so now, so when I go so to visit, part of, the no 12 spot, 12, part of 12 spots is right along here. And that's because that building's a mess and nobody parks there and nobody lives there. So once you take away, once you start filling this in, we well, can reduce it more. No, no. Well, no. Well, no. no. You got a you got a driveway coming in. You still can park yeah. on the street in front of the building. Okay. Like I, well, like everyone else, they don't know. They don't know that. There's a drive. There's a driveway in there. There now. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so it's on the side of the home. It's not in the middle, but it's right. still. It's also right. going to have another spot up front and a spot in the back. It's not 22 feet. Oh, right. We're it's definitely awesome. taking some parking space to get back on board. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. 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 All right. What other questions do we have? I don't know. So I understand they want the fence in the inside. They don't want the building. I understand that part. And uh, they want the fence in the inside of the tree. Is there anyone else opposed or undecided? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I am an address for Michael Burdy. You've seen me before here. Okay. So I'm I like to be I'm an address for Josephine Alberti. Okay. And I live at 16. Um, I get all straight Quincy, but I have properties on Spear Street. Yeah. Two historical places. Okay, that's been my whole thing. I know nothing's going to happen, but I, I want to make it known. That's a historical district area. You have part of the street, two ways, 
The other part of the street is one way. Mm -hmm. In front of my building, there's four parking lots, I believe. Uh, I can't park there. They're always taken up. So we do have parking for our, our people there. But when you tell me that people don't need a car because they live near the um, T and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't work. People drive cars. So that area is totally congested. Spear Street <coughs> is on both sides. Yes, they start rooming home. And maybe they could convert them into bread and breakfast homes someday. Who knows? If it was a, a nice area, nice sidewalks, nice lighting, nice trees. We have such a beautiful area right next to the uh, historical district area. Mm -hmm. the, the Church of the Presidents, mm -hmm. the Bethany Church, and all we want to do is build stuff like that that doesn't go with the architecture of the area. At least it, if you build something, it should at least you know, reflect the area that it's being built in. So I know Nothing's going to happen. That's why you don't see people at these places come here. That's why people don't go to meetings when you have these meetings and you say, oh, only 12 people think nobody's interested. That is not true. People are interested by going on in Quincy. And my voice is not going to be heard. I know. So there. But it is. If you want some changes on, on the building, I the think that building you don't want to speak up. That building, the outside, should at least conform with bricks or something that goes with the area, or the stone. The historical district ends at the fair building. Right. How why is it in there? I didn't draw the map. <laughs> well, the house that's standing on there now is a historical home. I understand, but, but as far as the city looks from a historical map, I just looked it up, man, and that it ends. Well, that's kind of silly. Yeah, I think you're right. Why don't we change the laws? You can't change the laws. I'm not elected. I'm just saying, I know you guys. I know you guys are probably going to get out of I'm just saying. We need to change the zoning laws. That's what I said with the city of Do something. All right, I said my thing. That, that is honestly how I feel. I, I think that I have a beautiful prairie building built way back. It, yeah. It's one of the first. I know the two family home that the two family that's there is, is really pretty. I put if all that the money. Done all the I didn't ask the city to do it. Why can't the rest of the, the, the area building. do it? No, they want to get a a big building and get a ton of money. That's it. I could have done the same thing, but I did because I love prairie. Well, what good does it do? So that's it. That's my question. Thank you. Is there anyone else opposed to undecided? We can't have more than four things on the agenda. That's the rule six. We're going to have to change something. Appeal. Right. That was easy one. That was easy. That wasn't long. I mean, it wasn't like. Does it follow birth and not leaving at 16? Are they all three things? I'm sorry. I was speaking on it. Okay. Name Hello, again? Joseph. Hello, Bertie. Thank you. 16 out of the street in Green City. Okay. And um, I, have, I know Spear Street pretty good. And uh, the street is real small. It's not a big street. Right. And people park one side, and sometimes somebody stops on the other side. A car can go by. If you had sidewalks in that street, you couldn't take two this, cars. It wouldn't fit. Right, right, right. Well, they park That's on why top. they drive up in the side of the street. Yeah. Right. That's my problem. And, uh, the building, the building in our, no, we take the family down, you know, we put it three, four floors, and that's no good. Parking is, I complain about parking because there's no space, and, uh, and traffic. Yeah. So, there's a problem there. They should look at the street and do something about it so that they can afford to have a, you know, take it down the house and put a building, I don't know. Can I ask you a question? Yes. How many units are? Do you have on the street? I have, uh, I have a six and two. And is, has there been problem renting because of congestion? Or? We have a parking inside. Okay, that fits for how many? More than I need. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering. I, I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, saw have, a couple. I have just in the back the six units. Okay. And uh, and, and the two you have people stacked. Parking, yeah. Okay. Does everyone have two parking spaces? No. No. You get one. Well, I'm 
I have some cars and parking there, but I don't want them to have to park. When I rent, I say, I get one parking space. Mm -hmm. Because in the winter, because it's, it's a circle, it's hard to... But he's given one and a half, that's what I'm saying. So everyone in the building has one and a half. So you can only have one, you can't have a half. One. We're going to bid on the other one. It's going to be first one of the bid. Whoever so wins, can, get the best I bid. Think on the six, I can do, I can do one, one and a half. But in the winter, the plow cannot be go by. Because Not this it's one. It's a circle. Not this one. Not this one. Hey, what happened to all that money? Savings. Savings. Anyway, anyway, still three days. We have to watch because it's going to be, after that, it's going to be much worse uh, later on. Yeah. If you're best going to give some tank. Yeah. If you're best going to they take it down some tank and they put a, a bigger one. Well, the, the historical building, the, the historical district would prevent a lot of that, so, you know. Yeah. No, not yet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Close on the other side. Come on, Dave. Come here. Dean Jacobs, 10 Charles Street, Quincy, Mass. Uh, I'm opposed to this, well, I'm undecided about leaning towards the post this project. You know, I, I share some of the concerns about the parking underneath the structure. You know, we, no one, I know you guys address it. No one wants an open, you know, garage. You know, people are just going to walk through there. I mean, literally, you sleep on someone's walking under your house. You know what I mean? I mean, I see it like uh, a friend of mine runs that driving school in North Quincy, right across. And so I, I, I work some hours for him. So I'll be there like 9, 10 o'clock at night. I'll be getting in my car, and people are just walking underneath, like from the team. It, it, it's very unsettling. Well, they're looking um, for cars that are unlocked. Well, they're also doing, well, they're also doing drugs. But, um, but what I'm saying is, like, you know, maybe close up a little bit, put some lattice, you know, kind of close that in. It, it doesn't look, um, uh, it doesn't look great. But um, I'm actually, you know, pretty, I'm actually opposed to the project. But if it is going to be built, it, it needs some some attention for parking because that's all right. And my other question is about the the rent of the uh, selling of the parking spaces. So each unit's going to get one. So there's six units. So there's three extra spaces. Correct. Four. 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 Sorry. Four extra spaces. So yeah. what happens if everybody's like, nah, I'm not going to go for that extra space. You're just going to, I mean, once you've sold the whole, the whole building, I mean, you can't just own those four parking yeah. spaces. No, I, I think if, if, they're, if they're available, um, you know, I think they'll be available for people to park. But you will, but once, uh, once, once, not, once, not a needed space. But once all the units are sold. Questions through us, there, please. Right, well, so once all the units are sold. And so you think that they're going to put, like, uh, online, you can park here for $5? All I'm saying is, no, no that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying, saying once the units are sold, yeah. the six units are sold, yeah. and the six parking spaces that are deeded with yeah. them, and there's four left, yeah. does the developer still own those other four yeah. parking yeah. spaces? Yeah, he can give them a sell to whoever he wants. The association, whoever's going to do it. So I'm just Not saying. The developer. Association will Well, I'm just saying the people should, well, the association That's why I want to make sure along. everyone gets at least one so you get a deeded space. If I am, and then what I do, break my rate? My right, well, I'm just making sure that there's not going to be a, a seventh owner and who just owns four apartment spaces. No, no. No. Okay. Yeah. No. Huh? So it happens and then they rent them. It happens in South Boston. I don't think it's going to happen here. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That would be a first for me. I know they charge money for them. Bizarro. How are you? Good evening. Name and address? I'm Jeff Hines, 197 Elm Street. Um, Jeff, go ahead. Tell us what you A couple of questions. Um, I just want to point out that there are, um, Rob, there are single families on the street also. I said this setup, sorry. Okay. There's several single families. So that does change the dynamics of the neighborhood. Um, I have a question for the board or Robert. Is it possible for a project like this to get to get built without coming for zoning that have that is supposed to go to zoning? Yeah, and, and shrink the building. And, and no, no, if it's supposed to oh, go to zoning. No, 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 outside no. of the ZBA or outside of Unless you, well, if unless you're in the, the like one of these special property districts, they, there's one right now in downtown, there's one in uh, Wallace. Um, so, if you're in a special permitting district, there is they they bypass zoning statute. But if you're just outside like this project here, then if you're in this come. location, no, there's no way for them. That's to correct, Rob. Yeah. Thank you. Um, there was a story last night, I believe, on Chronicle talking about green space, 
Um, we definitely need more green space in the, the neighborhood. I'm not even sure how much green space is here. And you know, as far as then, I maybe they said it, but I didn't hear what they said about snow plowing, where the snow is going to go. Um, is that addressed? Did I miss it? I'm not sure. No, it's just no. It did because it wasn't safe. And the, and the park is under, so there's not a lot right. exposed. Uh, but the snow uh, getting up to the building, where would that go? Uh, where the park is? Yes. Yeah, it'd have to be removed. You know, we have some uh, snow storage in the, in the rear. We have a 12 foot setback in the rear. You know, so that's kind of our sort of snow pond back there, snow storage uh, in the rear. It's a 12 foot, again, 12 foot setback off the, off the driveway from in the rear of the building. So is that going to be green space or green? Green, green, yeah. yeah. But is it going to be a designated area to put the snow? Right, right, right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Concern I have about projects like this. We're not against downtown being developed, but like Josephine said, and her husband, it's, it is a historic house, even if it's just outside. That was a Hardwick house. I don't know if people who remember way back, the Hardwick estate where the IHOP was, or where the courthouse was, I don't know if anyone remembers that. The other one, that was one of their houses over there. And yet, once these houses are gone, they're gone. Yeah. And um, there is some, you know, the Quincy says that the city says it loves history, but we keep tearing these houses down. I mean, it could be a beautiful house if someone wanted to put the money in. Oh, it could be. Like, good. Joseph, like Josephine and her husband did. They did a great job doing their house. Yeah. And, um, you know, it seems like we're going in a different direction now. Oh, well, it's the cost of money and everything else. That's the problem. But they did it much longer, though, you know. And it's taxes. It's, it's everything. Yeah. I, I, this all happened. It's, I understand. You know, that's that's what what I, I, and I understand what you're saying, but yeah. we, are, we are still a neighborhood. And, yep. you know, they say they're protecting the neighborhoods of Quincy. Well, we're a neighborhood that's getting mm -hmm. ripped apart brick by brick. And well, it's, I mean, that's the way you feel about it. A lot of people say it's progress. It's people getting in and out of the city. They want to live in a major city, but they don't want to live in Boston, they don't want to live in Quincy. This is getting overbuilt, I think. I, I know. And, and when you got people that live downtown, we haven't got those big projects yet, even down here. And when you've got people that have lived in, you know, families that have been in the same neighborhood since the 1800s, yeah. seven generations in one yeah. house, and then they feel like they're getting the squeeze put on them. It, it, so it's tough. It is tough. It's and tough. Um, the other issue is why are we allowing developers to go in and do these kind of projects? But then when someone puts in for an in-law apartment, they just shoot them down. So like on my street, there's a particular house has parking for seven cars. Mm -hmm. It's a two-family. Yeah. And... They were to put an in-law apartment in the attic with dormers, mm -hmm. and they were shot down on the first night. And yet we allow these other buildings to be built. It doesn't make sense when we don't take care of the residents that have been there. Because there's a lot of small, smaller houses that were right beside it probably, and that's probably why they go in. It's you know, like this big, giant thing, a building with dormers everywhere. I, I understand. But once dormers on every house on. I, I, uh, I understand, but for example, on, on Newcomb Street, one of the residents tried building yeah. a two-family on the empty lot. They couldn't, they had to withdraw without prejudice, but then they give permit for a monstrosity. It, it doesn't make sense. You know, we, we can't forget the because people Because they all there. wanted dormers on that, remember? No, yeah. I'm talking about Newcomb Street, when Michael McKenna was trying to build a two-family, where, where, where the building got built, got the permit, it's not being built now. You know, right right across from the wide parking lot, there was, the two houses put together, the Hayes house where the law firm was. You know what I'm talking now? Newcomb's right behind. Right behind the what? Right yeah, behind the no, 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 I don't remember this. They had like I three big one. projects down there that got approved and they haven't done nothing. Uh, I, I agree. Done anything. I, 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 I those I, things have to be like gone anyway because yeah. it's been so long. I agree, but, but someone tried building two family on that lot and they couldn't build it, someone that lived there. You well, know, that'd be a reason. Uh, I so know. They, they went through with all prejudice because okay. they weren't going to get it. But my point is, let's not forget the people the people that have been around. You know, we have, um, obviously, historic houses and... Um, Again, Mr. Heinz, but he's doing, he's getting his park in, he's making that, that flat, lighted property a lot nicer, he's moving closer to the bank, so... And I, I, he's trying to do everything 
you know, we cut down to six. I think, I don't know, one time we made a nine up there. But I, I understand the accommodations we've made. And there's been a lot of good in the neighborhood, too. I'm not saying everything's bad, <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is we got we can't forget the people that live there. You're right. And, right. and that seems to be that seems to be the case of what's happening. I, I, I kind of, I'm not going to get in an argument with you, sir. I, I, I adamantly take offense to that. I am second generation in Quincy. I bought my childhood home. I care deeply about the future of this city. I look at every plan and proposal, just like each one of these gentlemen do, on their own time. And I'm sick and tired of people insinuating impropriety by this board. Right. And I, I think, I, I think, excuse now me, I'm down. excuse me. I'm down. You're out of line, bro. I'm not out of line. Oh. I'm sick and tired of it, and you're out of line. Why don't you leave? I will not. Brian, you're out of line. You're, don't, don't tell me, excuse me, don't right. tell me anything, all right? <laughs> I'm, I'm just sick and tired, and I'm not accusing you. You're, you're, you're asking the general question. I've never seen you here. I'm just sick and tired of it. Every week, week in and week out, these guys are getting their heads kicked in. I'm getting my head kicked in for doing what we see fit, for doing what we look at in, in every single project. And I'm sick of it. I, I, I am. I'm, I'm done after tonight. I'm resigning from this board after tonight. I am so sick of it. Oh, good. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Knock that off. That was pretty fresh, real. Oh. You're a clown, dude. Do something for the city instead of just complaining about it, brother. Oh, she's got a big mouth. All right, all right. whoa, whoa. Whoa! And I appreciate you, dude. I really do. And I appreciate your sentiments. It's just, it's it's entirely frustrating that we and just, in, we get, there's, a, there's an insinuation. It did. Hey! Outside, both of you. There's an, no, I, I just, no. I just want you to know, sir, sir, oh. I just want you to know that these gentlemen care as much about the future of your city as you do and the past and trying to blend every piece of it that we possibly can. We know we need growth. We know we need new growth. We've been we've been put on this board during a time which our governor said that they wanted the state of Massachusetts to add a hundred thousand housing units yeah. in the greater Boston area. Like we've been put in the most challenging circumstance, and we come in here week in and week out on a volunteer basis, and it is just infuriating that people think otherwise. And I, and I don't mean to take that out on you. It's a long night, I apologize. I apologize if you feel attacked, and I'll talk to you no, outside no. after. That was not my impression. It wasn't my impression that, that you feel that way. I think you feel the challenges that we have. And, and I've said the, the thing about, I've said the thing about Res A and taking care of, uh, you know, second generation up here numerous times. These guys have heard me say, we need a solution for, you know, for families to age in place right. and to be able to do that. So I'm championing some of the same things that you bring up. I, I, I and, and I apologize if I came across as aggressive. No, I, I, it's I, frustrating. I, it's interesting. I, I can ask it's frustrating. It's, 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 it's been a long night there, everyone. For, but, and, and you may not see me up here, but, We've been up here a million times. Believe me, I don't, don't want to be here tonight either. But I, it's, I'm here because I care about my neighborhood. I we're, not, we're not making any money on this. Everyone else, is, a lot of, not you, but a lot of people, whether it's the developer, the lawyers, whatever well, people are making money, we're not making money. I understand. Yeah. I feel the same, same way, my friend. And, and, and I appreciate what you're saying. It's just. But we have a balance. So we have a, we have a land over willing to develop in the city. Okay, I understand. and I don't own that property, and you don't own that property, I and 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 he's you know trying to work with us, and we're trying to work with him, and that's that's the world in which we all live. Like none of us are up here developing these properties either. I, I, I understand that, but we are a residential neighborhood that's been destroyed over the years. I would just keep getting caught. This wouldn't go on in other neighborhoods in the city. I don't believe it would go on in other neighborhoods because they protect other neighborhoods in the city. Our neighborhood. Just my opinion, for some reason, it, it just gets divided. Well, what's, you want to really get into it, how, in my opinion, my street had three different wards because instead of, they would never con consider even dividing the neck into three different wards, never mind one street. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's, it. that's all part of the problem. I get it. I, I said, is this your, and, is this the, and you're right, right next to downtown. Is this the council, with, 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 is this, this, is this street have four councilors too? You know, like, sort of right when you, it, we came and up it's here. no dis disrespect to anyone, but right. that's part of the, that's part of the problem. Okay. And it's, it's it's um fix your line in the district. I, 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 and, I, and I appreciate. I get it. it. I get it. Yeah. No, all right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, you Is There anyone else? Close on the side. Come up. Name and address for the record. Um, my name is Nancy Sudeau. I live 
live at 32 Newcomb Street. And my big concern in every meeting I go to, it's the same concern, it's the traffic. I'm right down the street from Whitley High School. Newcomb Street is a cut through. Yep. To get to that end of Spear Street, yep. you need to come up Newcomb Street, go up Francis Ave, and go down Spear Street. Now what happens if there is a big fire on that end of the street? And there's been fires, fire apparatus there. There's fire apparatus there constantly on Spear Street because of one of the rooming houses there. It can be day, day night, Really? Whatever, because I could see it right from my house. And they're there a lot of them there? Yeah. Okay. Whether somebody's having a hot attack, whether it's a fire, but there's fire engines there all the time. And the traffic from quarter past seven in the morning until eight o'clock, I can't leave my driveway because everybody's dropping their kids off to school. From two, from two o'clock in the afternoon to three o'clock in the afternoon, you get the same thing. Mm -hmm. There's been many people that have almost been killed mm -hmm. at the end of Newcomb Street trying to cross McGrath Highway. Yeah. There is not a flashing light. Yeah. There is no, a yellow sign, sign yeah, and yeah. that's it. Right. There are times where I have to leave my house, go up around the YMCA, mm -hmm. sit at the lights by the police station to go to the stop and shop when I could have probably walked there quicker. Right. But I take my life in my hands when I do that. Right. So traffic and adding more, I mean, granted it's only 10, but you've still got those 10 people that want to come up Newcomb Street, up Francis Ave, and are they either going to do an illegal turn? And then you have people, oh yeah, they bang U turns there all the time and go right up Spear Street when they're not supposed to. Then at 4, 4.30 in the afternoon, you've got the traffic coming out of City Hall, you've got the traffic coming out of the Harvard Vanguard building, and they go right down Spear Street, and they're not supposed to go to that other end. So it's a big concern, traffic. Mm -hmm. And even in the, the entire city is a big tra traffic. Everywhere. You know, Everywhere. I saw traffic yesterday afternoon at 5.30, all the way up the ramp by Home Depot. Well, okay. I, went, I went to a dark in Denham. It took me 45 yeah. minutes to go from house next to the highway, and I was in Denham in 10 minutes. Once I hit the highway. Right. I mean, it is. It's, it's, it's just a traffic drain. Now that's where we live. And they keep saying, people are not going to own cars. That is crap. I own three cars in the truck. I don't know. I'm going to go on. That's just me. No, I, I believe you. I, I, I hate it myself. Yeah. I hate the truck. Thank I hate you. it. What about? I, don't yeah. know, I, I try not to go anywhere at certain times now. Anyone else? Basketball? I'm undecided. Last call. Please be quick, John. Oh, yeah. I am really quick. I'm sorry. Tough night tonight, everybody. Um, John Orfield, she's to Grandma Road. Um, you know, Mr. Rydell, I hope you don't quit the board, okay? You know, I think you're a good member on the board. I miss you if you did quit. Um, and also, I want to put a shout out to Jay Duker. I think he did a great job when he was here. I'm not sure what people have gone, so I'm not afraid to speak about that. <laughs> <laughs> But um, this is this is business C, this area. Correct. Okay, so I mean, this is the area. I mean, we've seen the spear people come up a bunch of times. I actually think um, Attorney Fleming, out of all your projects, this is, one of your, this is one of your better ones. Oh. I like this project, and uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. McDermott has developed a couple successful projects already. So we have a good developer, good attorney, good plans. It's just a matter of the the master plan where people who are living in these areas that this is the future. So I feel bad that these people who are living in, in business C, this is the place where we're becoming the most dense. And we need this new growth to pay for things like new streets, for sea walls, to just pay for police, pay for fires, give the teachers the raises that they really deserve. So I mean, I know it's tough to, you know, for the people that live in the neighborhood, but I mean, you know, you do have the right, some of the people who are complaining tonight are people who are also renting too. So I mean, it's it's just, you guys do do a good job, everyone does a good job, I wish we could all just get along, we'll take a Rodney King quote and end it, peace. Okay, anyone else, last call? Call us by the hearing, close counsel, one speak. Um, David Cathy, Ward 1, Councilor, 48 Whitney Road. I uh, just, uh, a comment about Quincy Square. When I bought 25 years ago on Whitney Road, I knew Quincy Square was there. I knew the high school was there. 
I knew where I was moving into. I knew it wasn't the end of the neck or Adam Shore or somewhere far out in Squanum. So I knew we were going to have activity. Um, I'm in favor of the six units because I've been dealing with this all the way back to when Boston Properties was trying to push 14 or 12 in there. Yeah. Along with the sober house conversation that went on, these guys at least have whittled it down to six. I know we talk about parking 10 spots. I don't believe you're going to have 10 cars. I think a lot of people that buy a condo there are going to look at the convenience of walking up to the T and having that ability. They'll probably have a car. But I don't, I, you know, I, I see it. My sister has a condo over in Malden, very similar neighborhood. She doesn't drive. Her spot sits out there empty. She gets the spot, like you were saying, chairman, it's part of the deal. But anybody parks in there, there's a number of people that they just don't drive. They just hop on the T, they hit the bus, they go to work. Um, I do agree with um, Number Chin on the, on, I do like garage doors too. I, I, I think it does pose <coughs> an issue where people do end up walking oh, through one, have access in there. Uh, and I like the idea of the fence and, and everybody's or whatever to muffle the, um, to muffle the, the headlights on that side, right? But um, that, that area, as I said, I compare where I am and I'm at Sullivan Tire. Um, we're in an area where we know that there's going to be units put in its zone for that. We're on the edge of the city, uh, and they're always going to be looking at that. And, you know, some of the buildings that are down there, some of the rooming houses and whatever, are probably the buildings you want to disappear and have something go in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but um, Mr. Fleming and Mr. McDermott, I think, have done a good job to get it down to six. Thank you. Thank you, Council. All right, so to us, uh, you know, a, a door. Ain't a bad idea. It really is when you plan it up. And it doesn't matter whether they like it, or not, whether you want it or not, or we want it or not. So, uh, with that clean up, yeah, because people walk in there and they rip off your car. What they do is they go through the shit, uh, and it should happen. So I think uh, maybe an electric door, and then we're going to put the put the. Uh, well, if you're going to put them, I mean, if you're going to do that, you're going to, you're going to want to figure out how to close the whole thing. Down there. No, I don't think so at all. I, why? Because why are you gonna put a, why are you gonna put a door with a, with a side open man? Like if, if then you could just don't walk in there. Because you, you just it's gonna be completely different. It's it's a it, it's a mental thing. You just think there's a gate there and you just you don't go away. Right. They have to drop down two feet. They have to go around a fence. Right. Place. It's just different. It's just different. You know there's something there. It's, there's not a walk in there. But that's that's whatever you guys decide. The second thing we wanted is we wanted uh, an eight foot. White fence. Six. Six foot. Six foot. It's two feet down. Yeah, it's two feet down, right. In front of the trees. So they'll be on their side and, and we can kill that headlight and you shine off of there. And I thought there could be like five people leaving here tonight because they're getting somewhere down around here. That might be happening sooner than later. Anyway, I'm going to be going in favor of those changes. <coughs> I'm in favor. I'm in favor with the. Uh, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm in favor. I like the idea of putting the fence here, putting the bushes on the opposite side, the other apartment building. I'm also in favor of putting a garage door in. So, so I, I concur. Thank <laughs> you. I concur, concur, concur. I totally Have a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, ZBA 23-31, Ian McDermott, for a special permit variance finding to demolish the existing two-family home and construct a four-story, six-unit residential building with parking under the building on the premise number 5961 Spear Street, Quincy. I make a motion to grant the special permit variance finding. Second. Uh, with the fence inside. With the fence yeah. on the inside, inside and of and any uh, landscaping. Yeah. And then outside. Garage. Exterior garage. Second. Second. On the motion. Seeing that all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion in turn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All set.